Chapter 80 The Unfamiliar One, Two, You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 80 The Unfamiliar One, Two, The First Ingredient Zhou Minjun Thought of Using Was Octopus For Westerners, and especially for sailors, it was an ingredient that was famous for being called as the devil fish. It wasn't that there were no octopus dishes in the region of the Mediterranean Sea, like Spain, France, and Italy, but even so, it was an ingredient Westerners avoided. In Korea, it was similarly treated as jellyfish. And perhaps it was even worse than that. The proper recipes he knew about octopus was teriyaki or octopus sushi. But it was the kind of dish that was difficult to get a cooking score of 7, because the cooking process was too simple. To pick cow tripes, it was a dish he ate more than cook, and the only cooking process he could think of was grilling or frying. It wasn't easy to get a high score with that simple cooking method. To accompany it with puree or sauce, he wasn't confident on thinking up something that could suit well with cow tripe. In the end, what Zhou Minjun picked was the truffle, precisely speaking the box that contained the white truffle. At least, he knew much more cooking methods compared to octopus and cow tripe. Alan just looked at the box and said. Truffle, although it looks to be the easiest from here, it's the most difficult ingredient to bring the right aroma. What are you planning to cook with that? I haven't decided yet. I'm halfway there. I will decide when I get to know the cooking time. Then, I will immediately announce the time for cooking. One hour. It's not for only you, Minjun, but everyone here has to complete their dishes in that time. One hour. Many recipes he had thought of disappeared. Alan just stared at Zhou Minjun. And only then did Zhou Minjun notice him and return to his place with an awe. Ah. Emily covered the lid for the remaining seven boxes and said. Everybody turn around. I will change the position of the boxes. Nobody look this way before I tell you to do so. The eight participants all turned back. The sound of lifting and placing the boxes was heard. Kaya tried to concentrate on that sound. From the right, from the left. However, even if she did concentrate, there was no way she would know where the boxes went. Because they could have lifted it and just placed it in the same place. Kaya frowned. It would be good if only I don't get that. She was confident in being able to handle most of the ingredients. She even had experience cooking octopus in the market. Because when the market people gave her ingredients that were about to rot, she couldn't throw it away, even if it was a monster like octopus. She had never handled truffle, but she was confident on being able to get the hang of it if she got familiar with the flavor and aroma. However, sea anemone was an exception. It was also the first time Kaya saw one. Even if she wanted to test by grilling or boiling it to see how the flavor changes, she didn't have a big amount. The people took the boxes one by one. And it was the same for Kaya. She felt that it was unexpectedly heavy, but she couldn't know if the box itself was heavy or not. As everyone returned to their places, the judges smiled. Even at first glance, it could clearly be seen that they had expectant faces to see the reactions of the participants. Joseph yelled in a surprise. Everybody open your boxes. There was no need to, but they tensed up at his voice. Kaya opened the lid of the box in the nervousness that if she didn't open it immediately, it will blow up like a bomb, and she moved her hands so fast it seemed like she was convulsing. And then, she immediately contorted her face. Oh fuck it. The round sausage, no, the cow phallus that looked like a round sausage was placed inside the box. Kaya raised that thing looking at it as if she was looking at a cockroach. The exterior was oily, and as she smelled it, she sensed the strong and unique smell of gut. On the other side, Chloe got a flavorless and aromaless shark fin unlike the cow phallus. Actually, you could say that it wasn't a good ingredient because only the feeling was important, and you could only give it flavor with the sauce. But just because of that, you needed to have high skills to cook it deliciously. However Chloe was putting a strange face. She did eat shark fin before, but it wasn't an ingredient she liked much. She
She didn't eat large-sized fishes because of the big amount of quantity it contained and to eat healthier. And if she was going to give it flavor through a sauce, then was there a need to eat it at all? That was what she thought. And she didn't have as much experience in handling shark fin as that. The sea anemone Kaya was begging not to come to her went to Anderson. However, he didn't really have a nervous face. It was Anderson who had received tutelage under his parents about all kind of cuisine. And he wasn't as inexperienced as to yield before something like a sea anemone. Hugo got the calf brain. Joanne, deer liver. Ivana, cow tripe. And Sasha got the octopus. They all had dissatisfied faces. Just looking at your faces, I can see your confidence and ambition. Alan with an ill voice. Sighs could be heard from everywhere. Joseph smiled like a grandfather from the next house and said. Perhaps you would think that this mission is too excessive. As these are ingredients some of you may be disgusted at, you will also think if there's a need to cook it. But this will show your skills more clearly than ever. With an ingredient you haven't handled and aren't familiar with, the ability to understand and analyze that ingredient in that short time, those who don't have that ability will be the ones to get eliminated today. There isn't a fixed amount of eliminated participants. I promise you. That if you make something over the standards, there will be no eliminations. But of course, if you get caught below that, it's going to be a different story. There won't be eliminated participants. At those words, no participants got flustered. In the first place, it didn't seem like the judges did think that it was going to happen. Because one of the eight could only end up making a mistake or showing lacking abilities. If there wasn't a miracle. We will give you ten minutes to design your recipe. Think up how you are going to cook in those ten minutes. He had always thought this, but the time for designing the recipe was too short. Actually, designing a recipe with a quality to pass a mission in that time frame was something that even specialized chefs had difficulty with. If that's the case, then how would these amateurs take it? Of course, in the case of Anderson, Kaya, and Chloe, they all had high cooking levels, but cooking well and being experienced were different things. Joe Minjun slowly thought of many recipes. First, it was the basic dishes that used truffle as garnish. And honestly, that was the easiest method. Zhou Minjun first ate a little bite of the truffle. He needed to understand the flavor. Honestly, he didn't get the feeling that it was delicious. It was a feeling of vinegar mixed with dirt that opened up the hole of your nose. They said that if you kept eating it, you would get to know its charm, but at least it didn't have a special charm. As I can't roast it, I will have to put the flavor as it is on the dish. Just like the thing that was in the box wasn't black truffle but white truffle, you just couldn't roast the truffle itself. Unlike black truffle, you had to eat the white truffle whole to save that aroma. If you boiled it in water and stored it just like in the French method, the aroma would disappear. And because of that, in Italy they preferred white truffle and in the France they preferred black truffle. So because of that, the recipes Joe Minjun thought of were mostly Italian dishes. The most normal thing was grating the truffle on the oil pasta. There was also that method of putting it on a meat dish, and making the aroma of meat and the aroma of truffle not collide wasn't a difficult thing to do. And it was also good sprinkling some on a well-made omelette. First, oil pasta, or gratin with macaroni or gnocchi, thinking about the given time, the latter one was a better option. Because making oil pasta for one hour was really inefficient. Even if you made it slowly, it was a dish that could be completed in 20 minutes. It was obvious that it would become a deducting factor. If he were to make gnocchi, the problem was in if he could hand make it. You boiled potatoes, cooled it, mixed it with flour and eggs and made the dough. Just doing that would take one hour. Joe Minjun's eyes became sharper. It was the moment to choose. Was he going to use a commercial gnocchi knowing that the quality was going to fall, or was he going to put up with the danger and hand make it? Cream cheese for the sauce. He also thought of putting in tomato sauce, but it was better to use the cream cheese that utilized gorgonzola to not make the aroma clash with the truffle. 
the combination of gorgonzola and truffle wasn't that bad. First of all, the estimated cooking score that popped up in his head was much better that way. It was at that moment. Alan opened his mouth. The time for designing your dishes ended. Everybody start cooking. Sound of looking for the ingredients busily was heard in all over the place. However, Zhou Minjun first started to boil the water in a pot. If he started to boil the potatoes even a little late, it was no different to having failed his dish already. Zhou Minjun first sliced the potato in half. And when it started to boil, he put it on the pot. He had even brought smaller potatoes for it to cook quicker. What remained was for the fire to reduce the time. Aside from that, the ingredients were simple. Cream, butter, onions, gorgonzola cheese, fresh mozzarella cheese, and salt and pepper. Zhou Minjun first chopped the onions and took off the moisture. After that, mixed whipping cream and cream on a 1.1 ratio. Then, he fried butter and the onions which moisture was removed on a pan, and when the onion got considerably yellowish he had to put the cream and the gorgonzola cheese. He waited for the sauce to boil, and Zhou Minjun checked the potatoes. In the first place, they were small potatoes, and because he had sliced it in half, it was already cooked. Zhou Minjun put a bowl on top of ice water and put the potatoes on top of that. It was to cool down the potatoes a little faster. There was still some time for the cream cheese sauce to boil and for the gorgonzola to melt. Zhou Minjun slightly looked at Kaya. It seemed like she was planning to stew. However, honestly speaking, he didn't want to eat it however she made it. Even if the cooking score was 10, he wasn't planning to eat it. Perhaps it would be better if it was brain. But to eat that, as a sane guy, no, as the same male, it was a sinful food to eat. I don't know if I would vomit eating that. Zhou Minjun laughed bitterly and shook his head. It was at that moment when he was feeling the importance of the ingredients. Then, the judges approached them. Joseph asked. What are you making? It's potato gnocchi gratin with cream cheese sauce. I'm planning to place the truffle on top of the finished gratin. The strong aroma of cheese may devour the aroma of truffle. Did you think about that? The proportions would be imper, Zhou Minjun, that was talking, stopped at that moment. Bang! Bang! Those sound kept sounding. And each time, Zhou Minjun flinched. Kaya was holding the phallus of the cow and striking down with her knife. Aside of being bloody and fierce, as a man, it was a scene that could only make you shiver and get goosebumps. The judges also turned to look. Emily was putting on a funny expression, but Joseph's and Alan's faces were a little pale. Kaya seemed to have sensed their sights, but after she slightly turned her head, she looked at them and said while grinning. It was the smile of a devil. This is fun. I think I will get addicted to it. The unfamiliar one, too, and translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 81 The Unfamiliar One, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 81 The Unfamiliar One, 3, Alan shook his head as if he was sick of it. This was one of the ingredients he was opposed to being used in this mission. Precisely speaking, it was an ingredient he disapproved of. There was also the image for the broadcast, but he basically didn't want to eat it. Even if he was a chef, he was still a man. There were many delicious things in the world, so he didn't want to bring that thing to his mouth. However, it was a story that didn't matter for Martin. When he heard that story, he strongly proposed using cow phallus as an ingredient. He said that in this awful mission, it was an ingredient that could give good pictures, and so it would get good reactions. Alan admitted that his opinion had persuasiveness. But. That thing will end up entering my mouth. He couldn't help but feel sad while thinking about it. It wasn't that he didn't try cow phallus dishes, but every time he ate it, what he thought was, let's not eat it again. Would Kaya be able to bring an outstanding flavor capable of changing his thoughts? 
Alan stopped thinking for now and looked at Zhou Minjun's countertop. He was already making the dough using eggs, salt and the already cooled and mashed potatoes. Looking at the dough getting large like a snake, Alan admired. The characteristics of a gnocchi dough made by an experienced chef was clearly seen. The dough had a smooth and pudding dot like exterior, with an elasticity that stretched stickily. At the least, it was a dough that perfectly followed the basics. He is certainly growing. It would be hard to call it as a conspicuous growth. But Zhou Minjun was slowly raising his skills without resting for a minute. He had known that Zhou Minjun wasn't originally a person capable of making that kind of dough. But was it because he was being influenced by the surrounding chefs? At least, he seemed to be more solid because he had the basics. Alan looked at Emily with a confident face, and Emily put on a confused one when she looked at him. Alan said with a voice that was softer than usual. The state of the dough is good. Leaving aside the combination with truffle, I'm really expecting for the flavor of the gnocchi itself. Thank you. Because Zhou Minjun saw him walking in front of him constantly, he didn't dislike that he replied shortly like that. Alan smirked and went to another countertop. Emily said in a voice so low she seemed to be telling a secret, and then followed his back. I'm expecting it more than Alan. Good luck. And when the judges left like that, Zhou Minjun let out a sigh inwardly. Honestly, every time they came, he only felt that his concentration was dispersed. However, it was also a problem he had to beat. Just because it was a kitchen doesn't mean that it wasn't an atmosphere which you could solely focus on cooking. Customers pile up, and the orders pile up just as much. And at times, dishes return. Only when you didn't get shaken in that situation could you be called a complete cook, a complete chef. But of course, how many people would it amount to that had had a mentality to withstand that? Zhou Minjun kept brewing the dough he left. After making it long like a snake, the next step should be slicing it by an inch long. After that, it should be fermented for 10 minutes, dipped slightly in water, placed in a container with cheese cream sauce, sprinkled with mozzarella cheese, and baked in the oven. As he put the dough on the fridge and checked the state of the cheese cream sauce, the gorgonzola had already melted. Zhou Minjun separated that with a sieve and put it on a container for oven use. When he checked the time, he had approximately 25 minutes left. However, he couldn't relax. After he fermented the dough a little more, he just had to bake it in the oven for 17 minutes. There was no reason to hurry. As he relaxed for a moment and looked around, Kaya was already boiling the stew. Chloe was boiling down the shark fin in a sauce with soy sauce as its base, Anderson fried the sea anemone and was making puree. In the case of Ivana, she seemed to have put green onion, garlic, bell pepper, mushrooms, and other things in the tripe, placed it in the oven, and then she seemed to be making blueberry puree to use it as a sauce. In the case of Joanne, she roasted the deer liver like a steak and seemed to use balsamic sauce as the dressing. For Sasha, the octopus was already in the oven so he couldn't know. For Hugo, it looked like he was boiling the calf brain in a sauce. They were mostly roasting it. Actually, if you didn't know well how to cook it, roasting it was the easiest choice. Because accompanying it with bechamel sauce, fruits, vegetable puree, or whatever seemed to suit, it was easy for the result to be not bad. But of course, you wouldn't know what score it would have. Time flowed. Zhou Minjun took out the dough from the fridge and put it on boiling water. Originally, you had to cook it for 3.5 minutes to have a good consistency, but as he was going to cook it again in the oven, he only needed 1.2 minutes. From now on, every minute was a sensitive one. Zhou Minjun took out the gratin gnocchi with a sieve and put it on the oven use container that had the cheese cream sauce. After he had sprinkled some mozzarella cheese, he put it in the preheated oven on 170 degrees. He just had to wait. Zhou Minjun just looked at the clock impatiently. Rather than the first 10 minutes, the next 5 and the next 2 minutes were felt much slower. And when exactly 17 minutes passed like that, Zhou Minjun took out the container and put on a smile. 
Even if you were an experienced chef, the only thing you could be certain of when you looked at the dish was that the mozzarella cheese was well dot cooked, but Zhou Minjun was different. Potato gnocchi gratin, freshness. 93% origins. Too many ingredients to know, quality. High cooking score. 7 out of 10 it was 7 points even in a state without the truffle. Maybe. He didn't think that. In the first time, the cooking score was just like he had estimated it to be. Grating truffle wasn't a factor that could raise the cooking score from 7 to 8. In the first place, it was a simple thing that didn't even require skill, but you wouldn't know if the truffle could make a fantastic combination with the potato gnocchi gratin. But that was also not it. Actually, even if you grated the white truffle on top of the cheese, nothing much would change. But that much was also good. Because it wasn't a combination that lessened the flavor, as so the cooking score. He couldn't eat the food, so he only smelled it a bit. The special aroma of truffle that harmonized with the aroma of smell and the dirt was, honestly speaking, it was only special. It wasn't an excessively charming aroma. Why do they like this? He felt the same way when the judges ate the foie gras one of the world's three great delicacies. Although it was a word used only in Korea and Japan, he thought that the name was because of the price, because just the price was outstanding. However, in the case of foie gras, it was only a liver full of fat. Although the flavor was deep, precisely because it was too deep, it was a flavor you would reject. Even if your tasting level is 8, are you unable to enjoy every food? But actually, the reason he couldn't enjoy the ingredients properly wasn't because there was a problem with his tongue, but because those were unfamiliar ingredients. Those were food you couldn't eat easily, and people that enjoyed it were also scarce. Even Korea's Pyongyang Nengmayan, dot, was difficult to properly enjoy if you didn't eat it many times. Basically, he was the sensitive type for tasting. He could feel the flavor better than normal people, but it was difficult to compare him with Kaya. Everybody take your hands off. Joseph yelled with a blunt voice. However, in the case of Chloe, she could only put on a bewildered face. It seemed like she couldn't keep track of time, but her shark fin was still in a state where it was still inside the pot. Chloe looked at the judges with a teary face, but they shook their heads calmly. Chloe. Bring your food with the pan. Rules are rules. Yes. The participants looked at Chloe with regretful faces. Emily opened her mouth with a calm voice. It must have been a difficult mission. Although I'm not a chef, I know that you have done the best you could. You have done well. We will start the evaluation. Kaya, come to the front. Alan was the type to eat the worst apples first if there was ten. He looked at Kaya's stew with a dispirited face. The vegetables and the piece of meat was showing only half of it because it was covered by a red soup that seemed to be spicy. At first glance, it seemed to be delicious. But he let out a sigh. Kaya said with a provocative face. It's penis stew. I know the name. There's no need to tell me that. Alan grumbled with a mean voice and hesitated while looking at the dish in front of him for a long while. In the end, Emily couldn't hold it anymore, and lifted her spoon and drank the soup. She nodded. First, the flavor of the soup is good. I could barely detect a fishy smell. Did you put in coriander? Yes. I put in coriander and a lot of garlic. And I also put in some lime juice. Mmm, it's a stew that gives a strong impression of being from Northeast Asia. The meat, Emily chewed a big piece of meat along with some vegetables. Alan and Joseph looked at her as if they were looking at something heterogeneous, but she didn't pay them any heed. She smiled while putting a calm face. You saved the meat well. And the combination with the other ingredients isn't bad at all. It's to the point I want to ask Jo Min Jun the score of it, Emily looked at Jo Min Jun, and he evaded her sight desperately. He didn't want to bring that thing to his mouth when there wasn't even much to say about her dish. Emily smacked her lips as if it was unfortunate. 
well, we can clearly see that he isn't even thinking of eating it. It can't be helped. Can a chef be picky with food? Kaya sneered and said. He got enraged in that instant, but Zhou Minjun didn't say anything. He got a bad feeling that if he did say something, he would have to eat that thing. However, his guess was only half true. Alan's voice rang. There is some truth in Kaya's words. Minjun, come here. Yes, why me? Because just like she said, chefs can't be picky about food. And since you have such a sensitive sense of taste, there's even more need to get accustomed to this special ingredient, since you would be able to taste a delicate flavor others can't get the grasp of. This is an opportunity I'm giving to you. Those were some long words. When he first heard it, it seemed reasonable, and he also heard it as if it was directed to him. Why did he feel it like he didn't want to die alone so he was bringing Zhou Minjun too along with him? Zhou Minjun flapped the neck part of his clothes. He got sweaty. Joseph laughed ho-ho and said. Alan's words are correct. Thinking about your sense of taste, I get the feeling that letting this opportunity to try an unfamiliar dish pass is a waste. Minjun, challenge it. Chefs can't evade challenges about ingredients. What about the other participants? As Zhou Minjun said that and turned back to look at the other participants, they glared at him with a disgusted face. Joseph smiled and shook his head. Unfortunately, the amount of the food and the time doesn't allow us that. I think that the other participants wouldn't hate sending you as their representative, there's no need to say this, but Minjun has the most outstanding sense of taste among us. So it's an obvious thing to send him as our representative. Anderson said with a calm face. He slightly looked at Zhou Minjun and raised the corner of his mouth. I fell for their trap. He could do nothing about it if the atmosphere turned out like this. He thought that maybe Martin would side up with him, but he was smiling so wide that Minjun thought that his mouth would get ripped. Even Chloe was smiling faintly, so he had no one on his side. Zhou Minjun moved his feet with a face that was as pathetic as a cow being dragged to the slaughterhouse. And then, he glared at him Alan. Those eyes were so fierce it didn't make you think of his usual gentle eyes. Why isn't Chef eating yet? I was just about to. Here, take it. Alan gave a spoon to Zhou Minjun. Zhou Minjun received the spoon and after hesitating for a moment, he ate the smallest piece of meat along with some vegetable. At first he wasn't moving his jaw, but in front of all of the judges' gazes, he could only start to chew. He wasn't planning on just gulping it since it was a dish made by Kaya. Thinking about the effort the chef placed on the dish, he couldn't treat it as if it was garbage. I feel rejected, really. Just like Emily had said, the meat was sticky, but even that stickiness made him feel bad. The dense aroma of the cow that spread in his mouth was also bad. At least, it was good that there was the flavor of the sauce. If she had grilled it normally with only salt, he wouldn't be confident in being able to eat it. It was difficult to eat it, with a different meaning than foie gras. Each time he chewed, he got a feeling he was hearing the cow mooing from somewhere. As Zhou Minjun ate it, Alan too could only start to eat. They put the stew in their mouths with a determined face. Although there was some hesitation before eating, after they ate it, they certainly looked like pros. Alan said with a calm expression. You parboiled the phallus first and then put it in sauce, right? Yes. Perhaps, if you hadn't, you wouldn't have been able to get this flavor. Perhaps I would have oscillated at the special fishy smell of guts. But how did you know of this method? Didn't you not cook this before? I have cooked tripe a few times. I know well how the flavor changes if you parboil it or not. I also know that the phallus is a gut. Kaya put on a proud expression as if she was content with herself knowing that difficult thing. But of course, it was seen as a conceited smile, but Zhou Minjun could read that. Was it because the time they were together was long? It was certainly easier to read her. Joseph looked at Zhou Minjun. What's the score? Seven points. 
Soon, the score became an inquiry even for the judges. Emily nodded. Mmm. I also thought that it would score that. Excellent, Kaya. To get seven points with a penis stew. With Kaya putting on a faint smile, the evaluation ended. However, just because of that, it wasn't that he could return to his place. Now that you are here, let's try your dish. At those words, he could only bring the pot that contained the gnocchi gratin immediately. Emily opened her mouth after she tried his food. What do you think is the score of this? It was at that moment when Jo Min Jun was about to reply unconsciously. Emily grinned. I thought like that, but thinking about it, you still didn't eat it right. Eat it. You have to know how your own food turned out. Actually, he already knew even without putting it in his mouth, but there was no reason to point that out. Jo Min Jun put the potato gnocchi gratin in his mouth. The flavor of the white truffle, vinegar, dirt, and the dense flavor of the mushroom sticked in his mouth. The sticky white truffle didn't disappear like before. Even if he chewed the parts that didn't have white truffle, the aroma kept roaming in his mouth. However, it wasn't a bad combination. The thing that could turn out greasy because of the cheese was being covered by the white truffle. Zhou Minjun nodded. It is delicious. It's a little strange that you are saying that with your own mouth. I can't say that it is not. It's seven points. At least, it is plenty for me to say that it is delicious. Good. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have admitted it, but at least your bluffing is fine for this dish. Return to your place, Minjun. You, too, have passed. At Alan's words, Jo Minjun clenched his fists without saying anything. He had already done six missions, but every time he survived, he got a feeling as if he had succeeded. Chloe, you are next. Come to the front. Chloe went to the front with her pot with a nervous face. Joseph just looked at that pot and opened his mouth. You can't serve something that hasn't been plated. You know that it will deduct some points, right? Yes, I do, good. I hope that your shark fin becomes so delicious to be able to recover from that mistake. At Alan's words, Chloe didn't say anything and kept rubbing her hands. The injured part still hurt. Now that she was nervous, she felt that the pain got worse. Alan just looked at Chloe's hands for a little bit, and sliced the shark fin, and brought it to his mouth. He seemed to be chewing it for a bit, and then gulped it. And then, Alan turned back without saying a thing. Chloe felt her insides burning, so she just kept touching her apron. Joseph and Emily were the same. After they ate the shark fin, they didn't say a thing. Just like they had agreed beforehand. Chloe unconsciously looked back. And the participants sent her cheering sights as if it was going to be okay. Chloe met Jo Min Jun's eyes. At that moment, Jo Min Jun's eyes bent softly. Then, she could feel that she was getting calm. Chloe mumbled inwardly. Right. Chloe. You came all the way here. Cheer up. Even if you do get eliminated, you did really well. And, she couldn't say the last part even inside of her. And then, the time for her evaluation came. The unfamiliar one, three, end translator. Subak Proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 82. The unfamiliar one, four, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 82. The unfamiliar one, four, shark fin soup, this dish that was also called as which, dot, in China, could be categorized in two. A brown soup that had a dense color, and a blue stew that had a lot of soup. And Chloe's dish was a brown soup, and her shark fin had a sweet flavor like dompa pork. The first thing an Epicurean would see when they evaluated a Chinese restaurant was how the chef handled shark fin. The difficulty of cooking shark fin, among the thousands of Chinese dishes, was so difficult it could enter the top five. But it wasn't that it needed special preparations. Actually, if the quality of the ingredient was good, then the dish was already half completed. 
If you weren't an Epicurean, you could eat all of that deliciously. Not having flavor or aroma meant that you weren't fond of it. However, it was different for Epicureans. The stem dot like texture of the shark fin was an obvious thing, but compared to other dishes, the measuring stick shark fin had was strictly based on the sauce or the soup. It was unavoidable. You could save the plain flavor of shark fin, and didn't miss out on the original flavor of the other ingredients. Perhaps, you would tolerate it more if this shark fin was a cheap ingredient, but shark fin was an ingredient that if the quality was good, then the price would also soar through the skies. And obviously, the price of that dish could only be expensive, and if that food you inverted money on lacked even a little something. It was also obvious that you would buy the rage of the Epicureans. And it wasn't an exemption because they were judges. They felt the flavor more sensitively than usual, and they tried hard to feel the sticky shark fin they chewed. And their evaluations all matched. Joseph opened his mouth. Chloe, what do you think is the standard for a well? Made shark fin soup. I think that it's cooking it so the texture of the shark fin doesn't crumble, and at the same time, controlling the flavor of the sauce for it to be not too excessive. And do you think that your shark fin meets those standards? I'm begging for it. At least, the best I could, do, I can't say that. Because I couldn't even do the plating properly. But at least, I think that I have tried my best for the flavor, is it not? She seemed to have some confidence, but in the end, Chloe's voice lost confidence in the last parts. She could only do so. Because the cooking method for shark fin she knew came only by helping her mother. And because of that, she tried the seasoning harder than ever, checked the state of the pan and the fire, and tried hard to focus on the ingredients and her situation. It was a dish which she did her best desperately than ever. But. Just because of that, it didn't mean that you would get good food. Alan said with a hard voice. Do you know that the bigger a shark is, the more mercury it contains in its body? Yes. Then, only by eating a bite of this shark fin may have consumed a week of your lifespan, can you ascertain that this dish had that worth? At Alan's questions, Chloe couldn't reply anything. Emily let out a sigh and said. Chloe, our opinions about your dish all matched. One week of lifespan. It was at that moment. From the frozen face of Emily bloomed a smile. At that sudden change, Chloe couldn't even get perplexed and just shook the muscles of her face. It was a soup that I could even give fifteen days, instead of a week. Yes. I'm saying that your shark fin was perfect. Chloe, relax. Why is someone that made this kind of dish shaking like that? After Emily said happily, Joseph smiled faintly and continued to say. Emily said that she could give 15 days instead of a week, but as someone old, I can't agree to that. Because in 15 days, you can eat a lot of different foods. But at the last moment, when my flame of life is about to extinguish, I think that I would remember your shark fin soup. Chloe didn't reply anything. Her double eyelid seemed to shake like a puppy because of the shock, and tears slowly started to gather on her eyes. She lifted her two hands and covered her face. However, she couldn't hide the sobbing voice. Emily hugged Chloe's shoulders with a sorry face. We made the atmosphere really heavy, right? I'm sorry. No, no. It's not that, Chloe sobbed and wiped off her tears. Her double eyelids that were carved deeper than usual made her eyes to be seen more clearly. She opened her eyes as if she wanted to say something, but she seemed to feel stuffed and let out a fewing sigh again. Jo Minjun just looked at that Chloe. Because she had presented the pot itself, it became a deducting factor, but he wasn't worried at all. It wasn't that his feelings for Chloe were light at all, it was that he didn't have the need to get worried. Her score. I'm sorry. I got too nervous, relived, ugh. It's because I feel relieved. She seemed to be really nervous that she even twisted her tongue. Alan smirked and looked at her, and slightly glanced at Jo Minjun. Minjun. Yes. I'm going. 
Zhou Minjun walked to the front as if he was waiting for it. Alan laughed as if it was absurd. BDNV, I still didn't tell you to come out. You even made me eat the cow phallus for my tasting experience, and I also think that it would be the same for this shark fin. Is it not? Score it. Zhou Minjun put the shark fin in his mouth with a face full of expectation. He thought that when the sauce immediately touched his tongue, the texture of shark fin was a little different to what he had thought. He thought that it would be closer to jelly, but it seemed more like a round vegetable. However, it was still fresh and good. He wondered that if a well-ripened bellflower got more elasticity, it would feel like this. The sauce was also good. It seemed like there was some cinnamon, star anise, and something else mixed in soy sauce, but there was a soft flavor hidden in the dense aroma. The shredded radish or onions that are together with it, saves their original flavor densely and filled the empty flavor of shark fin. Zhou Minjun smiled. He wasn't opposed at all to cooking nationalities, but he didn't know why he remembered the moment he had a meal in Rose Island. Just with food, people could get happy. There was no happier moment when those words were felt in your tongue. A nice smile appeared on Zhou Minjun's face. It was a smile so clear that if it became a little bit denser, his mouth would rip. It's the best. What does that mean? It's just like I have said. It's a compliment, and at the same time an explanation. The flavor is the best, and the technique is also the best. It's also the best of what she cooked until now, Zhou Minjun paused for a moment. He could feel the judges gulping and their gazes looking at his lip. And when he saw that, he felt somewhat pleasant. Zhou Minjun raised the corner of his mouth and said. It's the best dish that appeared in Grand Chef's house until now. Maybe, Alan opened his mouth as if he was surprised. Zhou Minjun nodded. Yes. It's nine points. The reason why he didn't worry at all despite her big mistake was in this. It was the first nine points. And he believed that she wouldn't get eliminated because of her nine-dot-point dish. Chloe shook her head as if she couldn't believe it. She opened her mouth and said with a confused voice. There's no way. I have never cooked shark fin properly before, the first time that I made an eight-points dish was when I made risotto. And I didn't have much experience making risotto. I made a nine-points dish. Really? Zhou Minjun smiled brightly. You are a good chef. I'm not surprised at all that you got a nine. Point dish first among us. But I, Chloe paused for a moment. She was a chef that didn't even have certainty on walking in this path. No, actually, she was only a person that knew how to cook well. She couldn't say those words in front of the other participants. Joseph opened his mouth and said with a low and soft voice. Minjun's words are correct. Nine points. Although I don't know his correct standards, giving nine points to the contents of this pot, isn't lacking at all. The control of the fine flavor, it was a soup I could feel the basics you have accumulated until now. Not putting many kinds of vegetables was also a good choice. The moment the flavor got mixed, there's a high possibility that the shark fin would only take a small part between those ingredients. From now on, I aks your dishes to be like what you had made today, Chloe. Alan laughed properly in a while and continued saying. Chloe unconsciously looked at Emily. Emily laughed gently and said. Perhaps, even if your shark fin soup came out in a big Chinese restaurant, I would still have eaten it in a good mood. Thank you for letting me eat something delicious. At Emily's smile, Chloe started to cry again. Zhou Minjun lent her his handkerchief and said. You can also blow your nose. Thanks. But I can't let out any snot. Even after saying that, the next moment Chloe was already sniffing. Chloe blushed and turned her head away. Alan, that was looking at the two of them, glanced towards Kaya. She usually had a fierce face, but at this moment, her eyes felt sharper than usual. Alan grinned and opened his mouth. Minjun, you can return. 
if I have to call you again, I will. And I'm talking about calf brain or sea anemone. I will be expecting it. The momentary happiness crumbled in an instant. Zhou Minjun let out a sigh and returned to his place. Joseph was observing Chloe, who was trying to not sob, but he opened his mouth as if he was feeling more emotional. Don't cry, Chloe, and don't lower yourself. You know how to make something this delicious. It's something I thought when I looked at you. Compared to the skills you have, you are really insecure. What's the reason? Do you think that you are not an excellent person? I will tell you honestly. I don't know the path I have to walk. Cooking is obviously what I want to do the most and what I like the most. However, I don't know that just because I like it, choosing my life is the correct option. I know that. That perhaps, if I start to think that I can't enjoy cooking anymore, I will probably give up. Chloe said what she was holding until now. Joseph looked at her eyes acting like that. And Cho unconsciously evaded his sight. Even if he was an old man, his eyes were excessively transparent and pure. Joseph continued talking. You don't only enjoy cooking. However, if you properly start it, there will be no way that you will get sick of it. Chloe. If you don't become a chef, what do you want to do? I think that I would become a forensic scientist. At the reply that didn't suit her at all, laughter flowed. However, that wasn't the case for Joseph. Joseph nodded seriously and continued talking. You are a good chef and a good person. And you will probably also be able to become a good forensic. However, talking about my personal desires, I hope that you will become a chef. I believe that you will be able to shine more as a chef rather than a forensic scientist. Why is that? I'm curious at the dishes you will be cooking from now on. Of course, I will probably have risen to the sky before being able to try all of that. Joseph talked like that and smiled faintly. Chloe too, laughed after moving her mouths that still had the marks of the tears. The evaluation went on. Somehow, Zhou Minjun ate the food of the other participants as if it became something obvious. He looked at Martin asking for rescue, but it seemed like he had permitted this situation. It wasn't that Zhou Minjun's evaluation would influence the results, so thinking of it as a fun factor was nothing strange. Anderson got eight points with the sea anemone that didn't seem suitable to cook at all. After covering the sea anemone in cornstarch and fring it, you served it along with smoked paprika puree. It was that simple. But how could he save each of the flavor that well? It was easy for his fried sea anemone to be delicious, but it was instantly crushed by the point that it was difficult to make it have a deep flavor. However, not everyone could propagate like Anderson. Joanne roasted the deer liver well, and also succeeded in making a mango yogurt sauce that suited it well. However, she couldn't catch the bad smell. And the result was that the score was 5. In the case of Ivana, she was fine. She applied butter on the tripe, put vegetables inside of it, and then baked it. She also presented a blueberry puree and she got good comments. It was unavoidable because the combination of butter and blueberry puree was really good. 6 points. It was a fine grade. Hugo boiled down the brain in brown sauce, as if he was making asabuco. Although the score was 6, it was eatable. He thought that the brain was going to crumble like tofu, but the unexpected elasticity was also a fresh experience. Lastly, Sasha parboiled the octopus, applied basil and garlic, and roasted it. It was an easy choice, and it was an easy six points. Now that the situation became like this, although you wouldn't know about the others, Zhou Minjun could clearly see it with his eyes who was going to get eliminated. He looked at Joanne's back with regretful eyes. We will announce the eliminated participant. And there were no upsets. The unfamiliar one, 4, N translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 83. Scandal, 1, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 83. Scandal, 1, don't make that face, Ivana. 
Ivana slowly stroked Joanne's hair while putting on a teary face. Ivana bit her lips and hugged Joanne. I will also do your share. Yeah. Win. I will be cheering for you. Joanne smiled and patted Ivana's back. Perhaps, it could be seen that the one being consoled changed, but Joanne didn't mind. Rather, as Ivana was having it hard, she felt a bit better. Was it because she felt that she got a really good friend? She slightly glanced at the other participants. Honestly speaking, at one point Joanne started to think that she wouldn't be able to win. Thinking of winning, the other participants were too strong. Especially in Anderson's case, she thought that he would be able to work as a sous chef in a relatively famous restaurant, or perhaps even as the head chef because he wasn't lacking on the basics. Phew, I did know that this day would come. Joanne mumbled bitterly. Eliminated. The day that tag got placed on her name was today. Anderson opened his mouth slowly. You have done well. You sure are blunt. Until the end, really short. Shut up. Anderson evaded her sight as if it was awkward. It was like this every time, but the parting time wasn't an easy one. But just because of that, she couldn't leave the place immediately because she still had to do the interview. Before finishing the interview, she couldn't part ways in a sloppy way. Perhaps, they had given her more time to be together, but for Joanne, she felt this time to be bothersome. If anyone became a target of regretful sights, they would only feel that place to be difficult. She had to change the atmosphere. Joanne turned to look at Chloe that was next to her. And after holding her hands, she raised the corner of her mouth. Cheer up. I hope you gain it. She didn't mean to gain victory. Chloe blushed and smiled awkwardly. She didn't really say anything, but it was also funny to negate it and mention Jo Min Jun. Joanne slightly looked towards Jo Min Jun and changed subjects. Now that I see Min Jun, you said that Chloe's dish was nine points. Was it that delicious? Honestly speaking, shark fin isn't such a delicious ingredient. It doesn't have flavor or aroma, and only has the texture. Perhaps, Epicureans could have found something in that. But I still haven't learned to do tasting like they do. But it was certainly a surprisingly good dish, to the point it made me wonder if it really was her first time. It is not my first. I have made it sometime with my mom. But of course, it is also difficult to say that I do have experience, because I wasn't the one leading. I think that your mother does certainly cook really well. You said that you learned almost all of the dishes you know from your mother. Yeah. Chloe smiled embarrassedly and nodded. Jo Min Jun was certainly most envious of Anderson and Chloe from the ones that were here. Chloe had learned cooking through her mother, and Anderson's parents were professional chefs. So how many excellent dishes had they had eaten since childhood? Joanne smirked and asked again. So, was Kaya's dish delicious? Don't ask me that again. I don't want to remember that again in my entire life. Are you bad-mouthing my dish right now? I'm not bad-mouthing, no, think with common sense. Would you have liked it if I gave that to you to eat? I told you. You are a failure as a chef. Why are you picky about ingredients? Do you know how much it costs? I eat everything because it really is a waste. Kaya's face was serious. Jo Min Jun opened his mouth with a sickened face. Don't you have preferences for food? Well, I didn't live such a harsh life as to not have preferences. She said with a self-mocking voice. Jo Min Jun opened his eyes sharply and opened his mouth. Fried chicken, what part do you like the most? Wing, no, wait. This is a little different. That is also a preference. Kaya frowned her angered eyes and shut her mouth. She didn't have the words to reply back. Joanne that was looking at them happily asked a question again at Chloe. But can I ask you why you cried before? I never imagined that you would cry. Because you are always in a good mood. It's a bit embarrassing to reply. No, 
what's there to be embarrassed about? Girls are the prettiest when they cry. Then why don't you cry now? I think that it's just the right time for you to cry. Anderson said as if he was teasing her. Joanne frowned. I won't be able to marry that jerk in my whole life. I'm a celibate. You were. At Anderson's words, Joe Minjun put a more surprised face. Anderson nodded as if it wasn't important. I don't think that it's something to be that surprised. No, I didn't feel that from you at all, Minjun, don't believe him yet. Guys like him who claim to be celibates tend to marry earlier than anyone. Now that I think about it, there's also a similar saying in Korea. At Joanne's words, Jo Minjun nodded as if he had assented. Anderson frowned and said. Don't judge about others' beliefs as you want. Sorry, I wasn't planning on picking a fight. She smiled and raised both of her hands. He couldn't seem to keep saying something at her when he had already received an apology. Anderson gulped down the dissatisfaction and looked away. Kaya that was just looking at the both of them argue, said with a mocking voice as if it didn't make sense. What is this? Do you like each other? Silence flowed for a moment. Anderson raised one brow and looked at Kaya. Joanne was also putting a similar face. Kaya shrugged her shoulders and said. Then leave it, dot, that was a terrible question. Joanne trembled as if she didn't even want to think about that. Kaya replied with a calm voice. You are always like this with me and Minjun. At her words, Joanne shut her mouth as if she had nothing to reply back. Jo Minjun smirked and lent his palm. Kaya's mouth twitched and looked at the palm. The first one the staff called was Joanne. And as she left, the tense atmosphere eased up a bit. Chloe let out a sigh and said while looking at Jo Minjun. Thanks for today. For what? For the handkerchief, and for the nine points. I just said the score as it was. There's no need to thank me at the results you got by yourself. Even so, I feel thankful. Chloe laughed brightly like a baby. Jo Minjun just scratched his nose with an awkward face. Chloe smacked her lips after hesitating for a minute and then, she slowly continued talking. Actually, I wasn't really confident even while making it. I did my best than ever but, I really wondered if it was fine. Before the evaluation, you smiled with your eyes. Surprisingly, that comforted me. Actually, that was even before you drank my soup, so you wouldn't even have known how the flavor was, strange, right? It's a relief if it comforted you. What's there to be strange? In the end, people's thoughts are their own feelings. Anyways, I wanted to thank you if I survived. No. Even if I got eliminated, I would have felt grateful to you. There was no need to think about what to reply. Joanne came out from the interviewing room and called Jo Minjun. I'm done. Minjun, they said to go in. Yeah, understood. Chloe seemed to have something left to say, but she couldn't make the staff in the interviewing room wait. As soon as Jo Minjun got in the room, Martin laughed teasingly and said. I hope that it became a good meal to you. I'm not thankful nor resentful. Although it was a good meal, there were some things that I absolutely had to wash off from my mouth. The shock Kaya's stew gave him still didn't disappear. Still, as Chloe's shark fin's flavor was deeper than what he had thought, he felt less sorry for his tongue. Jo Minjun said while smiling bitterly. The proposal I got last time, about the tasting travel, I did think about that for a bit, but after what I have experienced today my heart seems to have turned away from it. Understood. It was my bad. So don't scare me like this. I'm really expecting you to join us. Is that true? Am I also going to eat that kind of food there? Chue tofu, dot, sirster dot ming, roasted tarantula, or monkey's medulla. EY, will I really do that? Martin smiled. Jo Minjun let out a sigh. Even so, he didn't know if he was going to participate in that program or not. Because if he won, then it would become a story that never happened. 
Martin asked with a calm voice. I know that this was your first time trying cow phallus, how did you feel? It was horrible. Aside from cooking well or not, it's an ingredient that you don't want to bring it to your mouth, honestly. EY, if you are a chef, you should be able to eat that much. That's job discrimination. Look at the judges. It seemed like even they didn't want to eat that. Well, Emily ate it well. But in the first place, she's not a chef but an Epicurean. Zhou Minjun grumbling like this in the interviewing room was really a strange thing. That meant that today's experience wasn't good at all. It was at that moment when Martin was putting on a sorry face. The youngest PD, Robert came to Martin with a serious face and whispered something. And at that moment, Martin's face also froze. What could it be? Zhou Minjun sent a confused sight. Martin hesitated for a moment, but in the end he stood up. I'm sorry. Let's have some resting time. Is there a problem? It's not Minjun's problem, no, perhaps, it could also become your problem. But first, rest for a moment. Martin passed by Zhou Minjun's confused face and went to the staff. He frowned heavily and said. Who wrote what comment? It's a comment that was uploaded about two days ago. She claims to be schoolmates with Kaya. But aside from being true or not, it's being paid a lot of attention among the people. Here, look at this. Tess Gilly. I have something to say. I was schoolmates with Kaya in middle school, but the Kaya Lotus I know and the one that is being broadcasted were quite different. Well, it's true that she's poor and learnt bad things. And her character is dirty as it is shown on the broadcast. But a victim the dark side of the world gave birth to, a neighbor we can understand. Looking at these expressions I couldn't hold it in anymore. That girl isn't on the level of going through puberty. On top of being a screwball, she's a ragpicker among ragpickers. Just look at the relation with Joe. She went to cook but she is flirting there. That's the reality for that B asterisk TCH. Just because she sold some fruit on the market and took care of her younger sister, she doesn't become a good person. And why are her words this harsh? Martin frowned. However he put it, his affection towards Kaya had grown a lot. But of course, he didn't know how Kaya would be thinking about him, but looking at her past and her actions, he wanted to take care of her as a niece. So there was no way that this kind of slander would be satisfying. You will know if you see it, but there are at least 500 replies only in that comment. Just counting the people that could have seen it, it would amount to a thousand, if not to ten thousands. And also thinking about the rumor that's going to be spread by their mouths. In the worst case, we don't know if it would become an issue that's going to be written in an article. Make a call to every newspaper office. That if by chance this becomes an article, they would immediately feel the defamation of their character. Will they fear that? It's only a civil affair at most, then do we only watch without doing a thing. If we rather use that as noise marketing like Peter, Martin let out a deep sigh. He looked at Robert pitifully as if he didn't know what to do with him. Are you really saying that? In your eyes, the cases of Kaya and Peter seem the same. Kaya is bringing us 30% of the rating. Kaya's scandal will not become noise marketing, but just noise. We will also not be able to appeal the couple relationship to the viewers, and her evil character will also crumble. What can we do? I don't know. Martin replied impertinently and fell in his thoughts. He suddenly remembered the words Kaya once said on an interview. The stage of getting closer. I have experienced it with many people. 18, it seems to be a short life, but it isn't. I have met fine people and also suffering people. The stage of getting closer, I did have it. However, I couldn't completely get close. It was just pretending to be close, that I had it. But in the end, they all left. Scandal, 1, end translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 84. Scandal, 2, 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 84 Scandal, too, perhaps among those who had left her, Tess Gilly could have been among them. No, looking at the situation, it was almost certain. But first, confirming it came first. Although there was no guarantee that Kaya would tell the truth, if she were to lie, with would only backfire on her. They could only wait for her to choose a clear option. Martin moved his feet. He, who sat in front of Zhou Minjun with an exhausted face, smiled. Zhou Minjun looked at him with a somewhat anxious face. What happened? You said that it was somewhat related to me. Well, there's no need to hide it, so I will just tell you. A scandal regarding Kaya exploded. A scandal. It seems like it is related to her middle school days, but we aren't certain yet. The important thing is that many people already read it, and we think that it will soon become a big topic. Does Kaya know of this? Not yet, but she will soon because she has to hear being a jerk. Jo Minjun's eyes became dark. It was something that he vaguely knew. That there was a case bigger than what he had thought in Kaya's school days because Kaya herself had said it when she became a star chef later on. Although he didn't remember the name, he had heard that she was once close with Kaya. However, she was from an upper class, thus it was what separated them. When they became so distant with each other to the point that they couldn't even look at each other, Tess earned a scar on her body that she had to carry for life, so Kaya could only drop out of school. But it wasn't a problem for Kaya. Although Kaya was the bad type, Tess wasn't much different. However, the one who got a scar was Tess. If the situation was the opposite, Kaya would still be attending school. Did a scandal like this happen? It was something that didn't happen in Zhou Minjun's memories. Perhaps he could have influenced it. If there was a difference with Kaya's original life, the existence of Zhou Minjun was all of it. Originally, she would have faced the broadcast much darker than she was right now, but due to that, she lived every day more cheerfully. That could be what triggered the person who slandered Kaya, the trigger that originally shouldn't have been pulled. Zhou Minjun opened his mouth. When are you planning to tell her? Right after our interview ends. This kind of problem is better handled the faster it is solved. Phew, right. Thinking about Kaya that's suffering from that ill comment for a long while, he didn't feel good at all. Perhaps they were being considerate of Zhou Minjun's feelings, but the interview didn't continue for long. After he forced himself to smile and reply to some formal interview questions, he went out the room and he saw Kaya leaning on the wall. He slightly glanced at her hand, but fortunately he didn't see her handphone. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for the interview. Kaya replied shortly. He didn't know why, but he felt that her voice was filled with disdain. Jo Minjun asked with a dubious voice. Did I do something wrong? You were always like Wei, as if I'm about to get angry. I'm not angry. I think that you are right now. Kaya's eyes twitched. You are gentle to the likes of Chloe and you even gave her your handkerchief, but why do you always look at me like a troublemaker? I know that I couldn't learn and I'm poor. But I'm tactful and have my pride, so stop treating me like a kid. He wanted to refute back something at her words like a habit, but he shut his mouth. Thinking about it, it wasn't unreasonable that she was talking like this. Just like when a parent opened their mouths with goodwill, those words would mostly be heard as a lecture, if he said that it wasn't the case, she would be pestering him until he got sick of it. He replied with a bitter face. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Why are you getting serious again? She felt like she had grumbled a lot, and she grumbled with a little embarrassed face. Zhou Minjun just looked at her. He wondered if she would be able to endure at the soon-to-come situation. Thinking that the future changed because of him, he felt really sorry. He said in a rather low voice. When you get in, you will hear something unexpected. Unexpected. It's not a good thing, but you must endure and don't crumble. Also, don't get hurt and I would like it if you can just let it pass. What is it? 
why are you making the atmosphere this heavy? Kaya looked at him with an uneasy face. Zhou Minjun smiled faintly. I believe in you, so don't be that uneasy. Because at least, one people will still be at your side until the end. The interview ended. Kaya ignored everyone's worried faces and went to her room. No one could hold her back because the rage on her face could clearly be seen. No, perhaps, it would be more accurate to call it horror instead of rage. However, no one could ask her how she was feeling. The problem wasn't in the door that closed with a banging sound. No one knew what kind of words they needed to say to her. On the bed, Kaya buried her face on the pillow and yelled. Just like her yell that couldn't be spread properly, the stuffiness she couldn't express filled her chest. Tess Gilly. She thought that there would be no way that the name that made her grind her teeth just by thinking of it would appear again in her life. Crazy B asterisk TCH. Now, she even became a novelist. Kaya looked at the comments in the screen and twitched her nose. Although it was written in a long way, the contents were simple. Kaya was one of the worst problematic kids in school, and although she did become friends with Kaya, only violence returned to her. Kaya laughed as if it was absurd. However, that smile froze hard and her mouth shook like a growling dog. Kaya Lotus. I'm Kaya Lotus. If you are going to say this kind of dog sheet, why don't you say it in my face? You still couldn't fix your mitomania. Sheet that like tongue. It was at that moment when Kaya was about to reply because of her rage. A call alarm appeared on the screen and she saw a familiar name. It was Gemma Lotus, her sister. Kaya stopped for a moment, and she relaxed the muscles of her face, and put on an awkward smile. It was a smile that could clearly be seen that was made up, but it was fine. Because it wasn't even a video call. Making a smile was simply a matter of how she was feeling, because if she was feeling like dying, it was obvious that her voice would follow her expression. Hello. Kaya. You, you fan, ha fine, the voice of her younger sister that can't even control her accent or pronunciation. That weird voice rather calmed her down. Her younger sister, Gemma, suffered from cerebral palsy. Her words, movements, and expression couldn't be natural. However, Kaya didn't hate nor judge her unnatural movements even once. If there was someone like that, she didn't even hesitate to stick to them like a crazy dog, bite them, and pour out curses. She was that kind of sister. Kaya opened her mouth with a soft voice. If there was someone near her who knew her, they would get surprised by the gentleness and softness of her voice, what's there to not be fine about? But what happened? Those jerk bastards didn't pick a fight with you again, right? AM fan. Bot, bot, tuis. Sure, I'm fine. Boo, but, Tess. She, I also know. Don't worry. There's nothing to make a problem of. Does mom know? New. I didn't tell her. No. I didn't tell her. Good. Don't tell mom. It's a promise. Gemma hesitated for a moment but in the end, replied shortly, um, yeah. Kaya put on a bitter smile. You are having it hard because you don't have your sister, right? I'm sorry. I will win quickly and return. AM fan with hot Kaya. So Don Wowie. I'm fine even without Kaya, so don't worry. Even if you tell me to, can I really do that? Even you are worrying about me right now. I'm fine, so don't think about anything. Even if you do worry, there's nothing that would change. Understand. Gemma didn't reply. Kaya let out a sigh. It's adding to the telephone fee. Let's slowly end it. I will call you later. Okay. Ung. Um. Chill AP. Yeah. Cheer up. Yeah, I will. The call ended. The screen turned black, and she saw what she was typing before. Kaya let out a sigh and erased the comment. 
she had just told her to not worry, so she couldn't make this bigger. It was at that moment that a knocking sound was heard. A careful and soft sound. Even listening at the sound, she could guess the voice that would be heard after that. Can I go in? It was Jo Minjun's voice. Kaya hesitated for a moment and went to the door. She said with a low and rough voice. I know that if you come in I will probably vent my anger on you. So don't. If you are angry you have to vent it. I will receive it. Kaya couldn't say anything at his words. She didn't want to vent her anger on him. She wouldn't know if it was another person, but she didn't want to do it to him because Jo Minjun treated her better than anyone else. It was the first time that she had felt respected by someone. So she acted more sensitively on his actions. Would he ignore her or would he see her as a spoiled kid like everyone else? However, Jo Minjun didn't think like that even once. It could be heard weirdly if you put it this way, but she felt like Jo Minjun was looking at someone else when he looked at her. She didn't hate it. Perhaps, he would be mistaking her, but even mistaking someone in a good way felt good. So she hated herself that much for acting like a kid. She was different to what she usually said. Don't ignore me because I couldn't learn. Don't ignore me because I'm poor. Even after talking like that, she was the one that did things that made you ignore her. It was to the point that even when she saw herself, she saw a dull fellow with an empty mind, but she was curious as to how Jo Min Jun could evaluate her so highly. She couldn't open this door. Because the moment she opened it, she wouldn't know as to how low she would fall. She couldn't anymore. She didn't want to act like a kid in front of him anymore. That's how she thought. She was already holding the doorknob. She looked at her hands with confused eyes. No, you can't. Kaya opened her mouth. It was a voice so low it seemed like she was mumbling. So low to the point you wondered if it would be transmitted through the door. If you don't leave, I will get miserable. I'm spoiled. Right. I told you to not ignore me, but actually, Kaya closed her mouth. Those words were really weak for her to say. She bit her lips and continued talking with a stifled voice. Perhaps, I'm the one that's ignoring myself the most. That's why, help me so I don't feel more miserable. Each and every word was heavy. What kind of face would he be making right now? What would he be thinking about? She's a spoiled girl with many problems. Kaya herself couldn't know. Go. I'm begging you. No reply came back. Kaya was just standing in front of the door. How many minutes would have passed? One minute. Five minutes. Perhaps, it would even be ten or more minutes. Kaya opened the door after hesitating. But there was no one there. At that moment, she felt a corner of her heart itch. Even after telling him to leave with her own mouth, could she have been expecting something? She felt pitiful. It was at that moment when Kaya bit her lips and turned back. Something caught her attention. Next to the door, a small plate was placed. It was a sandwich. Kaya looked at that the sandwich absent-mindedly for a long while. How much time passed? She slowly bent down and picked up the dish. After laying down on the bed, she slowly took a bite. Idiot that she wrote on the comments. Scandal, 2, and translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 85. The Pig and the Fire, 1, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 85. The Pig and the Fire, 1, the controversy about Kaya overheated. There were no sites that were even a little bit related to Grand Chef that didn't talk about Kaya's past. There weren't many people that thought that Tess Gilly had mitomania. She even uploaded an image of her injury on her chin and said that it was Kaya's doing. They couldn't think that she was lying when she had even shown her face in a picture. The netizens got divided in two. Some doubted that there was some lie and exaggeration in Tess Gilly's argument, 
and there were those that heated things up by cursing Kaya with the exposed facts. The fact that they were classmates and their relationship wasn't good was simple. Also, it was true that the scar on Tess Gilly's chin was done by Kaya. Many anonymous people claimed that they were indeed schoolmates, but the problem was that they couldn't be verified if they were real or not. Hilary Hahn There's no need to think about it in depth. Although it is true that she did give her a scar in her face, I think that it isn't right to criticize her before knowing what happened before that. LGE What should have happened for me to assent as to her having a scar? Whatever happened, I think that it can't be permitted. Erica Vlados At LGE that's what she's saying, that permitting it or not beforehand is a stupid thing to do. In the first place, if Kaya did something that bad, she would have gone to a reformatory. But she didn't. It was this way. To say that they can be sure of it, the information was too scarce. But of course, there were some people that were sure with that little information, but those kind of people only stained their name with ridicule and criticism. If time passes, then it will all be okay. Martin mumbled as if he was memorizing a chant. Robert frowned as if he didn't understand. Can't we just reveal the truth? Although it will all be covered and many people won't see it in a good way, if we tell everything as it is, there will be a lot more people that would understand it. But if she doesn't say anything, although it will be a little uncomfortable, in the end it will all be forgotten. On top of all, there's no proper evidence to that truth except the words that would come from Kaya herself. If we revealed that without any evidence, they would say that we were manipulating the media, and the public opinion may worsen. Trust me, this is the best path for Kaya and for the broadcast. Following the information they got from Kaya's mouth, the scar of Tessa's chin was an accident from both sides. But the reason only Kaya got expelled, or rather, got disposed by dropping out of school was simple. Grand Chef didn't announce anything official about this situation yet. Precisely speaking, they replied in the most typical way. We are investigating the situation. There are a lot of different points in what Tess Gilly said to what we know. And they didn't mention any details because there was a need to check the reactions of the media a little more. And the results were certainly not bad. Yesterday, the 10th episode that showed the dessert mission was broadcasted, and it gave the sensation that the incident of Kaya's middle school life got a little pushed back. But of course, people that like to expose others' errors were drooling, but this much didn't cause a problem. Martin massaged his neck. The more he thought of it, the more his head hurt. First, the only thing they could do now was wait. If the bubble shrank, it would end there. But if it grew larger, then they would have to pop it themselves. Whichever side it was, now wasn't the time to get some results. Let's slowly prepare for the mission. There weren't many fun factors in the dessert mission. But still, it was fortunate that Zhou Minjun could reproduce that jelly. But we can't depend on Zhou Minjun forever. This time, let's certainly catch the attention of the viewers. Ugh, another one will get eliminated today too. Seeing that hurts my heart. Martin smirked. Worry about yourself. You don't know when people are going to walk the road of elimination. Do you think that the seed of PD is eternal? There's only talk about you again. Anderson frowned and closed the window in his handphone. It was understandable. To replicate the recipe of a dish he ate once, after that scene, you wouldn't think about any other person but Zhou Minjun. Zhou Minjun smirked and asked. Are you jealous? It's a little different to jealousy, because it's normal to get a stomachache while looking at others doing well. Just looking at you saying those things that calmly, you are certainly similar to Kaya. Stop it. It was an expression as if he really didn't want to listen to it. Zhou Minjun laughed and raised his kochi. It wasn't the kochi or sheep kochi. The things that were skewered in the kochi was prosciutto, tomato, and bread smeared in olive oil. It was an Italian dish called bruschetta. It was a simple composition, but the moment it entered his mouth, the salty flavor of the prosciutto and the aroma of olive oil spread. 
and the aroma of the perfectly roasted bread followed. He admired happily. For the flavor of bread to be this important, bread is a basic in Europe cuisine, just like rice is for your country. In my country, rather than eating bread like this, how can I say it? Snack. We like it that. I know. You also said that last time. Did I? Zhou Minjun laughed embarrassedly and kept eating another bruschetta. This one didn't have toppings, but only bread with olive oil. The surprising thing was that even that was delicious. Well, with only one drop of sesame oil, the flavor got better, so he thought that he could take this with a similar feeling. He slightly looked at Kaya. She was eating the cheesecake Sasha had made with a little tired face. She said that she didn't have appetite and that her stomach hurt, but she had made many things but couldn't even enjoy it. Zhou Minjun's mouth was filled with bitterness. Although he wasn't showing it, it could clearly be seen that he was having it hard. Thought it was unfortunate, but there was nothing he could do for her. Hugo looked Zhou Minjun's expression and carefully opened his mouth. Do you think Kaya's going to be fine? There's no way she will. Look at how many ill comments there were. Kaya's still young. She's only 18. Thinking about it, Kaya's the youngest participant among the surviving ones. Hugo looked at Kaya in a new light. Although she did childish things, he felt that she didn't give a sensation of being old because of her makeup. She also had skills. She was a possible winning candidate. It was difficult to treat her as a normal teen. Who's the oldest among us? I wonder. Isn't it Sasha? Sasha should be around 28. Anderson is 22 and you are 21. How old was Chloe? 21, I wasn't aware of it, but all of the top candidates are young. I remember that there were at least one or two people in their 30s. That means that we did that well. Hugo smirked with a confident face. It was at that moment that Robert approached them to the table. The faces of all of the participants froze. If it was something that the youngest PD had to come and find them, the reason was really simple. The words came out from Robert's mouth as they had expected. After two hours, the mission's going to start. Get ready. Robert just said that sentence and disappeared. Kaya that was looking at his back, frowned. It makes me lose my appetite. Me too. Sasha replied with a sad voice and rested her chin on her hands. Chloe rolled her eyes as if she had fallen in her thoughts, and looked at Joe Minjun. What do you think the mission is going to be? Minjun, guess. You got it right last time too. I wonder, I can't seem to predict it today. Do you have days which you can feel those things? Isn't everyone like that? He replied with an awkward face. Even if it flowed as it originally was meant to, his memories were a little cloudy. It seemed like recently, the judges tried to make the contents of the missions a little harder. And if the contents of the mission changed, his memories wouldn't be of use. Chloe replied while smiling. It would be good if Chinese cuisine comes out as the theme. If it does, everyone will be in a disadvantage except for you. You can at least think positively. Chloe pouted. Zhou Minjun smirked. If other people said this, the feeling would be different. But since it was Chloe, who took care of others better than anyone, that said those words, she didn't feel hateful at all. However, aside from being hateful or not, Chloe's wish realizing didn't happen. The afternoon of that day, the theme the judges announced wasn't related to a country. There will be two themes in this mission. And the first one is fire. Emily lowered her voice as if she was trying to make the atmosphere heavy. Since she was forcing it, it didn't feel heavy at all, but could it be because of the position of judge they even got nervous and their hair raised even with her breath. The people just looked at Emily. Emily slowly enjoying their gazes, and continued talking in a slow voice. They said that fire gave a sense of civilization to humankind. It made them know of cooking, as well as the various cooking methods they could do. 
roasting, poaching, simmering, sautéing, steaming, broiling, grilling, it is difficult to count every one of them. You have to cook one ingredient in three different methods, and that ingredient is, Emily paused for a moment. No, that wasn't pausing. Gulp. Emily gulped, and after laughing embarrassedly, she continued talking. Even trying to talk makes me drool. The ingredient is pork. It's good to roast the exterior yellowy, and it's also good to coat it in flour and fry it. Putting it in stew and saving the flavor is also a good choice. Whatever side it is, I hope you cook your best. Alan continued to say after Emily with a calm voice. The time you can use to cook is exactly two hours. We will give you 30 minutes from now on to think on the recipe, so think about what you will cook in that time. 30 minutes. When they were thinking that 30 minutes to think about three different recipes was not that long of a time, Joseph opened his mouth. If the three dishes you present are harmonious, we can give you extra points. However, the most important thing is the quality of the food that's on top of the plate. I will pray for you to make your best on cooking. Think of your recipe. We will give you exactly 30 minutes from now on. Zhou Minjun rolled his head. Two hours and three dishes. Although it had all of the body parts of the pig, it wasn't by Korean standards but in American standards. Taking into account those points, he had many options to choose. There were so many it made him wonder as to what he could cook. So if they gave him a wide variety of options, the recipe he could use was also wide. Because from the time he was together with the other participants, the cooking methods and the recipes he got to know from them were many. If he combined all of that, he thought that he would be able to get a good result. Zhou Minjun closed his eyes. Inside his eyes, many recipe windows appeared and disappeared. Although he wouldn't have noticed, it was a really fast speed. Two recipes appeared and disappeared in a second, so compared to the normal people, his conceptualization skills were ten times faster. But of course, there were many recipes he had copied from them. When he opened his eyes, only five minutes had passed. Zhou Minjun slowly organized the recipes in his head. The first thing was a Hong Kong-style dompa pork. The cooking method for this wasn't one or two. He could boil, fry it, and slice it to boil it down to a sauce. The second one was fried meatballs and smoked paprika with balsamic sauce. The last one was roasting pork rib in a barbecue style. And the composition score was six. Zhou Minjun laughed. At least for the recipe composition, compared to the first time he entered the competition and now, the level had clearly changed. The estimated cooking score was all the same. 8 points. The pig and the fire, 1, end translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 86. The pig and the fire, 2, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 86. The pig and the fire, too, actually thinking up of an 8-dot-point recipe wasn't such a surprising thing now because there were only two restrictions on the recipe. Use pork and use fire. Actually, he thought that there was no pork recipe that didn't use fire, so in the end he only had to think of a recipe related to cooking pork. And while he was in Grand Chef's house, he had tried more than 10 or 20 dishes related to pork. They were chefs that came from all over the country. Even if they were amateurs, there wasn't a thing or two that he couldn't gain from them. That information was piled up in his head, so it would be more strange if he couldn't think of an 8-dot point recipe. However, it didn't just end on thinking of an 8-dot point recipe. You could know just by listening that it was a 10 points recipe. Because it would end when you heard that explanation of another person. However, it was a different story if you talked about bringing the 100% of the flavor of that recipe. Three different dishes in two hours. If he didn't want to make a mistake, he had to meticulously think the cooking process. He even had to set the completion time for the three dishes to be the same. It wasn't that hard of a condition. For pork galbi, he had to make the sauce beforehand and simmer it in it, and for meatball, 
it didn't need too much of cooking time. So the dish that inevitably needed more time would be dompa pork. Did you already think of it? Kaya was frowning and crossing her fingers, and then she asked while glancing at him. Zhou Minjun replied with a relaxed face. Well, it's not that hard to think about, right? Disgusting. Kaya glared at her and crossed her fingers again. He talked to her again. You can't think of a recipe, L.C., no, I thought of many, but I don't know what to use. The two over there, don't talk. Emily looked at the two of them, and sent a fierce look. Kaya pouted and crossed her fingers again. It wasn't that she was particularly slow. He could see that the other participants were not yet done designing a recipe. Was I this fast? At first, he didn't think that he was this much. But perhaps, it could be a problem of conviction. The others don't know if a recipe would turn out to be good or not even if it was good because they didn't have the system that scored the recipe. However, Zhou Minjun didn't need to think about that. Because of that, he could be calm to the point that the judges sent preoccupied sights. Minjun. Did you already finish the designing? Yes. Think for a bit more. The recipe you thought of being perfect can actually bring you a completely different result. Just like there are dishes with horrible recipes, but can give a heaven's flavor. Yes, I am thinking. Zhou Minjun replied while laughing calmly. Alan opened his mouth feeling somewhat uncomfortable, but he closed it again. Thinking about it, there was almost no time that Zhou Minjun's recipe was a mess. And it didn't seem like it will be a mess just because it was today. I will believe you. In the end, the only thing Alan could say was that much. Zhou Minjun slowly loosened his fingers. For the cooking score to be high meant that the difficulty was also high. If he acted stupidly for even a minute, there was a high chance that he could miss the timing to give it flavor. There was nothing to say about the dompa pork and the meatballs that had to be fried, and the pork galbi was also a problem. Because he was planning to roast the pork galbi in direct fire. Although the difficulty was lower compared to Kaya's grilled eel, he wasn't as skilled as Kaya. So it was a mission which he had to concentrate more than any time else. Time flowed. Joseph was slowly looking at the clock, and announced the start of the mission with a clear voice. Start. The participants went to the pantry. The first thing Zhou Minjun took was pork meat. Samgyopsal to use in the dompa pork, shoulder meat to be put in the meatball, and the ribs to be used in pork galbi. Aside from that, he had to take dry red wine, onions, potatoes, herbs, etc. Just as there were many ingredients because it was three dishes, Zhou Minjun didn't use much time in picking the ingredients. Freshness 73%, 81%, 91%, ah, it's here. 97%. But the quality is middle. It was different even in choosing potatoes. Others had to touch it and look at the color and the shape, but Zhou Minjun just had to look at the system's window once to get the answer. There was already a difference from there. It was a speed so fast that not even Anderson who had received special education since small, or Kaya who grew up in the market and saw many ingredients without rest could compare to. Actually, when their baskets were still half-dot-filled, Zhou Minjun was already preparing to cook in front of the countertop. The judges approached him and looked at the ingredients, and couldn't hide the surprise. Joseph looked at the potatoes and the onions and opened his mouth. Sometimes, I simply thought that you had a good sense, but you really pick ingredients well. The ingredients you picked are all of the best quality. They are fresh and grew well. Do you have some kind of no.how? It's not to the point of having a no.how, I just have good eyes. Those are some envious eyes. I think that it would be difficult to pick the ingredients as fast as you. Just like the person that said those words was Joseph, it was a compliment more certain than anything else. Zhou Minjun smiled and put three pots on fire. The first pot had onions, green onions, ginger, garlic, salt, cinnamon, and refined rice wine to boil the samgyopsal. 
the second pot had sweet pumpkin, onions, carrots, and scallions for the vegetable gravy for the meatballs. The remaining one had canola oil to fry the samgyeopsal. The characteristic of Hong Kong-style dongpa pork is that you have to fry samgyeopsal before boiling it. The first thing Zhou Minjun handled was the pork ribs. Since the meat and the bone sticked with each other, separating them so the mean won't go bad was also an ability. Zhou Minjun rolled the 5mm samgyeopsal. It could be seen as something particularly not difficult, but it was a quite a difficult work because you had to balance all of the sides of the meat equally. This knife process was what determined the score of pork ribs. If you didn't do this step properly, one side would get undercooked and the other overcooked. Because of that, Zhou Minjun's eyes, which didn't even have double eyelids, became sharper and more detail-oriented than usual. He sliced the rib meat calmly but quickly. It wasn't that he put strength in the tip of his knife, rather, it was like sharing skinship with your partner and rubbing the meat with soft hands. Every time he did that, the meat got sliced easily. But of course, there was no person that didn't know that that process actually needed an outstanding amount of concentration. He really grew a lot. Joseph thought while slowly looking at Zhou Minjun's knife. Only two months had passed since the elimination rounds. However, in that time, Zhou Minjun was slowly filling the lacking points. No, rather than saying slowly, his speed was certainly fast. He certainly has talent. Zhou Minjun couldn't look at himself because the system covered his eyes, but looking from the other's point of view, Zhou Minjun was a chef that had plenty of talent. The knife wasn't something that ended simply by moving it. You had to understand the ingredient and feel it. It was a vague expression, but it could only be expressed that way. And Joseph could see that. Zhou Minjun's comprehension towards cooking raised so much it couldn't even be compared to two months ago. That was clearly felt from the recipe, from the knife, and in the cooking order. But of course, a situation is just a situation. Good chefs stimulated him from his side, and he had to clash with them at least once a week in the missions. If he didn't grow in that situation, that would be rather strange. However, taking that into account, Zhou Minjun's rate of growth was really fast. It was difficult to call him a genius. That kind of word was more suited to the likes of Kaya, and basically, Joseph didn't like to call a chef a genius. Because he felt that the effort he had poured all his life betrayed him. However, talent could exist in whatever theme, and Zhou Minjun was one of the person he had seen with the best talent. It was like that even without taking into account the absolute sense of taste. He had already heard through Alan that Emily proposed him to walk the road of an Epicurean. Joseph thought that it was a really horrible offer. Zhou Minjun was probably a chef that would remain in the history of cooking. So if he ended his life by evaluating the dishes of others, there would be nothing more meaningless than that. Even while Joseph was sending him that fierce sight, Zhou Minjun didn't notice at all. He rested the pork in a sauce made by mixing ginger, chopped garlic, barbecue sauce, soy sauce, red wine, sugar, and lemon juice. After that, it was the turn to fry the samgyeopsal. After frying it until only the exterior got seared and keeping the juice, you boiled that and steamed it after wrapping it along with the dongpa pork sauce. And that's how you completed the Hong Kong-style dongpa pork. Zhou Minjun put the dongpa pork in the starting dot-to-dot -dot boil oil, and immediately started to handle the pork meat that was going to be used in the meatball. Shoulder meat. The fiber of this part was rough and the muscles were tough, and it wasn't a part that had good texture. You normally boiled it for long or sliced it thinly to use it as pork chop. So of course, this part wasn't good to be used as meatball because it was better to use a part that had the less amount of fat possible. If you weren't skilled in handling meat, that process would be so hard it could take you many minutes. Some would think that you only had to mince it and slice it, but just because you strike the knife, the fiber wouldn't be cut that easily. If you didn't take into account the strength and angle, as well as the texture of the meat, it was a process that could only take longer. However, Zhou Minjun's hands were fast. 
When the samgyeopsal got cooked to the point he wanted, the minced meat was already mixed with dill. The amount of the shoulder meat wasn't much, but even so, having finished the meat dough in the short time the samgyeopsal was getting seared was a really excellent thing. Zhou Minjun first put the samgyeopsal in a pot with boiling water. Then, the judges approached Zhou Minjun's countertop and opened their mouths. Minjun, there's not even half the time now. Do you think you will be able to finish it? Yes. It's just like I have calculated. Before I saw that you fried dompa pork and boiled it. Will you be able to save the rough texture of the dongo pork that way? I'm planning to cook it in a Hong Kong style. I'm not planning to make the exterior hard and the interior soft, but I'm planning to also make the exterior soft. Hong Kong style dompa pork. Good. Do well. The moment the judges were there, Zhou Minjun didn't even look at them while talking to them. It meant that he was that much concentrated, and each and every time made him nervous. But it was fun. This intense moment that made you hold your breath, it gave you the feeling that you were properly conquering cooking. The corner of Zhou Minjun's mouth raised. In the oil that he used to fry garlic, chili, star anise, and ginger, he put green onion along with oyster sauce, kaoyang wine, aged soy sauce, and sugar. It was a sauce with a perfect ratio. He sliced the boiled samgyeopsal thinly, and put the sliced green onions between that. After that, he poured the sauce, rolled it in a wrap, and then he put it in the steamer. There was a little more than 40 minutes left. He placed a paprika on top of the fire, after that, he mixed bread powder and cream to the minced meat dough, and sprinkled salt and pepper. Now that he made that dough round, the feeling was different as before. Was it because he had made a lot of doughs while practicing bakery? Giving it shape now was much easier than compared to when he made the catfish meatballs. Was it this easy? It was to the point he questioned that. However there was no time to ponder that question. Zhou Minjun spread oil in the frying pan and carefully fried the meatballs. When the exterior got seared and got a dense brown color, it was the time for the vegetable gravy that was boiling until now to appear. Zhou Minjun poured the vegetable gravy in the frying pan and covered it with a lid, and then he took the breath he was holding. After that, the next step was simple. He peeled off the burned part of the paprika, and after slicing it longly, he placed it on a plate. When the vegetable gravy got burnt a bit, he poured red wine to raise the flames and slightly flambe it, and then he placed the completed meatballs on top of the paprika one by one. The sauce was simple. After turning off the fire that was used to cook the meatballs in the frying pan, he poured sugar, wine, balsamic, and vinegar and boiled it down with the remaining heat. When he sprinkled that on the meatballs with a spoon, it was the end. And the score. 8 points. A faint smile appeared in Zhou Minjun's face. It was a difficult process, but now that the results turned out as he expected to, he felt better. Making an 8-dot point dish without being troubled by it at all also made him happy. Zhou Minjun took some time to rest. If he wanted to get the best flavor, it was better to complete the pork galbi right before the evaluation. When there was about 10 minutes left, Zhou Minjun took out the dompa pork from the steamer and did the plating. And the score of the dompa pork was also as he expected it. A smile seemed to appear in Zhou Minjun's mouth, but soon, it became stiff as if he got nervous again. The remaining thing was only the pork galbi. It was unexpectedly the most simple and hardest menu. The other dishes were only difficult due to the process, but for the pork galbi, if you were even a bit careless, you could not get a good result. Depending on whether he could get 8 points in this dish or not would show whether he had talent or not. Zhou Minjun placed the pork galbi in the grill. Direct fire. It was one of the most difficult cooking methods related to fire. If you cooked it with charcoal or straw fire in a low heat, you wouldn't need to think that it was difficult at all. But cooking it with a high fire and not burning the sauce and cooking the meat wasn't an easy thing to do. And if he also had to keep the juices, how difficult would that be? 
Of course, his situation was a bit better compared to the grilled eel Kaya made. Because pork was a less sensitive ingredient compared to fish. But. The fire on the burner raised in a blue color, and sometimes in a reddish color. Zhou Minjun bit his lips. He was so nervous to the point that sweat accumulated in his palms. If he failed this dish, even if the other dishes were good, there would be no meaning. However, it was a challenge he had to beat. The fire looked alive. He wasn't the type to express such things in words, but the fire looked alive. The fire followed the juices and sauce, and every time it happened, Zhou Minjun couldn't blink and had to move the grill. The smell of the grilled meat was followed by a dense smoke. He wanted to cough, but held it down. There were two things that made him persevere. The aroma of the sauce and the meat that got heated, and the shape of it being cooked without even a trace of being burnt. Just like a woman giving birth, Zhou Minjun beat that hardship. The smoke, the heat, and the fear. And at the end of that fear, the result that came after he lifted the grill was simple. You perfectly roasted the pork galbi, just like the recipe, without any mistakes. By combining concentration, ability, experience, and feeling, etc. your cooking level has changed. Your cooking level has increased. The pork and the fire, too, and translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 87. The Pig and the Fire, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 87. The Pig and the Fire, 3, Zhou Minjun, Cooking Level. 7 Baking Level. 5 Tasting Level. 8 Decorations Level. 5 Level 7. Had this number ever feel this lovely? It was a number that made him more happy than the eight points that appeared next to the pork galbi. Now, he was on the same side as Anderson, Kaya, and Chloe. But of course, even if he was on the same level, there would still be some differences. But even so, he thought that he had finally been able to catch up to their backs to some point. Zhou Minjun looked at the number that was floating in the air with affection. If there was a problem, it would be Kaya that was behind the floating window he was looking at. She, who sensed his fierce sight, slightly turned. After she saw Zhou Minjun's eyes, she frowned and turned back again. What is it? Why was he looking at me like that? She did feel burdened, but she was too busy to mind that. It was the same for Zhou Minjun. The level had raised, but he still had to finish the plating. He didn't place a big amount on purpose, but he wasn't planning on imitating French dishes, showing the white plate. Only, if he placed abundant food, there was a high possibility that they would feel burdened. Three pork dishes by each participant. They were going to at least eat 21 pork dishes. Even if they made it deliciously, if the amount was much, there would be a high possibility that they would get sick of it from the start. Tasting started by imagining the flavor before putting the food in your mouth. And if that was the case, there was a need to bring up the flavor they would imagine to the utmost. For the first time, he had made all of the dishes to be 8 points, and those were the last dishes he had made with cooking level 6. It was a meaningful moment, so he wanted to show that perfectly. When he was placing the bite.size meat at the middle of each plate, there wasn't even a minute left. Zhou Minjun licked his dry lips and looked at the judges. Alan, who was glancing at the clock, yelled with a hard voice. Time's up. Take your hands off. The evaluation started. Zhou Minjun slowly looked at the other participants. There were only two person that got eight points in all of their dishes. Kaya and Anderson. In the case of Chloe, she had two eight-dot-point dishes, but the remaining one was seven points. The first one to get evaluated was Ivana. Her dishes were all seven points. It was a fine score. Since the participants of this season were all high-leveled, she couldn't show her outstanding skills. But if Ivana had participated in the previous season, she would have been a participant that gave much more impression than right now. Aside of her cute face, she had the qualifications and skills, 
because it wasn't easy for an amateur to make a seven-dot point dish. The judges also reviewed her dishes taking that into account. Of course, they couldn't tell if it was seven or eight points, but they could perfectly feel the level of that dish. Alan thought inwardly. To feel regret in this kind of dish. This season will certainly remain in history. Probably, from now on, there wouldn't be as many skilled participants as in the third season. In the first place, the story ended on the point that a participant had an absolute sense of taste. It wasn't that they reviewed Ivana's dishes in any special way, but even so the critic ended with quite good comments. Those were dishes that had stability. If you weren't a special Epicurean, most of the people that tried Ivana's dishes would be happy after trying it. Sasha and Hugo weren't that different. They had dishes that were six and seven points. Although it wasn't bad, those were dishes that lacked a bit to pass the evaluation. The judges had to crunch their heads thinking. It would be more comfortable if someone made a big mistake, since it would be difficult to eliminate one of them. In the end, they could only evaluate it subjectively. Minjun, bring your dishes. But first, evaluating the remaining people came first. Alan looked at Joe Minjun's dishes with expectant eyes. Since when could it be? He started to enjoy it more rather than evaluating it. The growth of this young participant could be seen with his eyes, and his growth was felt more clearly on his tongue. Is there an order to eat it? I recommend you eating the meatball first because it's the less stimulative flavor among the three. Less stimulative, Joseph said and brought a meatball in his mouth. The soft smoked paprika and the meatball that was covered in wine sauce was chewed in his mouth. In the paprika, an unexpected crunchiness remained, and along with that flavor, the rough but soft meatball stimulated his tongue and the sealing of his mouth. The flavor of the wine sauce that was mixed with balsamic vinegar and boiled down was quite normal. However, it didn't mean that the flavor lost color because you couldn't criticize a barbecue sauce for having the same flavor as barbecue sauce. Duck, you made this wine sauce to have a flavor that people just like it. It's not simply sweet, but it had the acidity and sweetness that just suit with the meatball. On top of that, the special flavor of the dry wine. Where did you learn this? This information would be difficult to find in the intern. Ah, right. You could read the recipe. Alan asked with a face full of questions, and nodded after he had understood. He knew the recipe of the things he ate. It was a really unrealistic thing to be conscious of that all the time. He wouldn't even need a teacher. Because just by going to a famous restaurant and eating their food, he would be able to obtain all of the information of that chef. Every time he mastered a recipe that chefs would normally try to hide, he would master an ability that's way beyond his age. His fork reached to the next dish. It was the dompa pork this time. The meat of the pork that couldn't even be compared to normal dompa pork was chewed, and the juice that was mixed with the sauce slowly wetted his tongue. On top of the flavor of the vegetables fried on Chinese oil, the dense aroma of the Kaoyang wine remained inside that sauce. He really felt like he was eating a luxurious dompa pork in a good Chinese restaurant. It was a dish that you wouldn't believe that it was made in just two hours and has this much effort and dedication. Emily opened her mouth with an admiring face just like a pure girl. It's remarkable to get this flavor in just two hours. I thought that time was for dompa pork, thank you. I am the one that should be thankful after eating this dish. Will you be able to eat this kind of thing for free? Emily talked like that and smiled. At times, she felt like a fox, but at least when she evaluated a dish, she showed a pure attitude of a kid. And that was also the reason Jo Min Jun couldn't hate her. It would be good if you stopped telling me to become an Epicurean. Jo Min Jun thought like that and smiled bitterly. It was now the turn of the last dish. Pork Galbi. The judges put on a more serious face. Joseph opened his mouth. You should know this, but among the dishes you have cooked today, this pork galbi is the most important one. Because it will directly show the ability you have. And, 
Joseph looked at the shape of the pork galby and slowly opened his eyes. Looking at the exterior, it doesn't look like it has any flaws. The sauce is well sipped in it, and it isn't burnt. The meat is seared with a really good color. To not burn it, it's the simplest but the most difficult thing. It's accompanied with the sauce, and if it's grilled, then all the more so. Joseph talked like that and put a pork galby in his mouth. A sauce made by mixing barbecue sauce and soy sauce. If you made a mistake, it could end up to be excessively salty, but the wine, vinegar, and lemon juice was making that weight to be light. And it wasn't just pouring the sauce on top of it, but after resting the meat, he cooked it with the sauce that was on the meat. It could be felt with that bite that Zhou Minjun had grown. A small difference he was missing, it was a dish that was difficult to make if you didn't feel the moment the fire touched the meat. It wasn't that the flavor was more outstanding than the meatball or the dompa pork. They couldn't feel that much of a difference in the flavor or in the completion. However, if you were someone that cooked, you could only feel that difference. The effort and skills the pork galby contained wasn't normal. Alan opened his mouth. I will honestly speak. I'm sorry, Minjun. Previously, I didn't see your probabilities of winning to be that high. However, after eating your dishes today, I am starting to think differently. Perhaps, you may do so. Yes, you will be able to win. It was a serious voice. Zhou Minjun smiled faintly. He thought that it may become awkward with whatever he said. But fortunately, Emily lent him her rescuing hand. Today, all of you had presented dishes that had nothing to call out on. And especially, it seems that from what Minjun had shown us until now, it is the best. No, actually, every time he does a mission I get a feeling that he's growing. I will also be expecting that for the next mission. It meant that he had passed. Zhou Minjun smiled and slightly bent. The evaluations of Chloe, Anderson, and Kaya's obviously didn't fall that much compared to Zhou Minjun's. They made dishes such as hamburger, shredded five-dot-spice marinated pork, ravioli, etc., and it couldn't be seen that it fell for even a little. Obviously, the eliminated person could only appear from the remaining ones. Ivana, Sasha, and Hugo. They wouldn't eliminate all of them. Aside of doing the reviving phase or not, it became time to get some control on how many got eliminated. At least for the broadcasting material, they just had to do so. Then, it's a matter of who they eliminate, Zhou Minjun slowly looked at the three of them. First, it didn't seem to be Ivana because her dishes were all seven points. However, in the case of Hugo and Sasha, they made two seven points dishes and won six points. Bust guessing who will be eliminated based on the score was hard. Sasha, Ivana, Hugo. Come to the front. The three of them walked with nervous faces. They had also guessed that they weren't the higher ranked ones, but the lower ranked. Joseph looked at them with a little exhausted face. I believe that you know the reason as to why we have called you. Are we all going to be eliminated? We won't do that. Only one person. Actually, there wasn't that much of a difference in cooking. They were all fairly good. But this place is one that you can't survive with it just being fairly good. There are tens of participants, and if some of them made a horrible dish it wouldn't matter. However, now isn't it? Better than the others. It's not enough with that much skill. Because there's no one that's sloppy among the ones that survived until now. At Joseph's words, the three couldn't reply anything. Because they knew better than them that their dishes weren't that outstanding. Joseph opened his mouth, but closed it as if it was hard to say it. But Emily seemed to want to help her, and instead, raised her voice. That's why we evaluated you. Not only for the dishes, but we will save the one who we are expecting their food from now on. Sasha. Emily paused for a moment. And then, asked with a low voice. Why do you think I called your name? Ah, uh, please. My heart seems to shrink. I'm sorry. With the meaning of apologizing, I will tell you something good. 
you have survived. From what we have seen of you until now, we reached a conclusion that we want to give you more opportunities. Go back to your countertop. Thank you, Sasha replied with a shaking voice, and after wiping off the tears that were in her eyes, she returned to her place. The remaining ones were two. Ivana gulped and clenched her fists. She remembered Joanne. I said that I was going to win instead of Joanne. But reality was like this. At that moment, she didn't know where her ambition had gone, and if it was even in her. Every time time she made eye contact with the judges, her heart beat, and she even started to have hiccups. Alan looked at Ivana for a moment and opened his mouth. Honestly speaking, the one that's better up among the three is you, Ivana. Thank you. But, that's all. Fairly good. Until now, you have never showed us something that breaks that concept. It meant that you have never showed us something that's only yours, something that will stay in our memories. In the other side, Hugo had his asabuko, and he had also showed a leadership that could lead others well. Ivana, will we be able to pour our expectations on you? Ivana bit her lips. Her face that was more pale than usual, was shaking. However, she didn't have anything to reply back. Just like Alan had said, she had never showed something good of her. She had merely survived until now. And it was lacking with just that. But. Yes. Be expecting. Looking what? I, I. Only know how to cook well. And just like Chef has said, I'm just fairly good. But, it isn't that I gave up on growing. I want to show you that I can get better. Give me a chance. Alan didn't reply anything. Instead, he looked at Hugo. And asked with a low voice. Hugo, what do you think? Do you think that we should give that opportunity to Ivana? At that moment, Hugo only smacked his lips. He didn't know what he should reply. If he gave her that chance, he had to get eliminated. But also telling him not to give it to her felt bad. He asked. Is my opinion important? I wonder. I don't know. I'm just curious about what you think. I'm thankful that you are thinking good of me. But I'm still lacking. Perhaps, if Ivana's dish was better than mine, I think that it would be right to evaluate it just with her dish instead of the future and expectations. Then, you will be the one to get eliminated. To get greedy beyond my abilities, that would only be mean. At his words, Alan's corner of his mouth raised. He looked at Hugo with warm eyes and asked. One thing is certain. That there's Italian blood flowing in you just like me. It was a wonderful speech. And just as that speech, I hoped that you would be able to accept my next words. Silence flowed from a moment, and what ended that was a blunt declaration. Hugo, you have been eliminated. Return your badge and leave the Grand Chef's house. The Pork and the Fire, Free, End Translator. Subak Proofreader. Saihikoa. Chapter 88. The Weight of a Restaurant, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 88. The Weight of a Restaurant, 1, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay. Get up, Chloe. Phew, difficult. Chloe was letting out rough breaths while lying on the mat. Zhou Minjun, who was holding her legs, released his hands and asked. Isn't it difficult to train every day? People who exercised also do it in intervals. You will get injured. But instead, I don't do that much. And there aren't that many training machines here, Chloe looked around the gym with regretful eyes. The gym that was made not only for the participants, but also for the staff, wasn't on the good side. Zhou Minjun looked at Anderson that was doing squats next to them. Anderson had a body that was unexpectedly built up. It was certainly different compared to him. Should I also do some exercise? You came here to do that, didn't you? Rather than coming to do exercise, I came to get some motivation. You don't get motivation from others, but you have to get motivated yourself. 
I have to do some exercise, you just mumble these words by yourself and your body is still the same. And your will is also the same. Fine. Then, should I start to, it was at that moment that he was going to end the word, today, that his phone rang. His hand phone rang. Joe Minjun raised his hand to Chloe for a moment and got outside the gym. The name that popped up the screen was, Jesse Dean. It was a name he hadn't seen for a while, so Joe Minjun put on a welcoming smile. It's been a while since you called. What happened? Just so. I was bored and I don't have anything to do. But shouldn't you be at school right now? Ah, New York is one hour behind. The conversation continued this way by catching up. She was still making jelly, how big was Grand Chef's house? And of course, a question that couldn't be out appeared. Aren't the both of you really dating? I told you that we aren't. At the voice that was filled with curiousness, Jo Min Jun replied bluntly. Jessie groaned as if she didn't believe him. Jo Min Jun let out a sigh and changed subjects. He was certainly tired of this theme. Because it wasn't only Jesse, but also his family and friends asked him about Kaya when they called. How is Mr. Lucas doing? Well, it seems like he was starting a new company. He doesn't tell those things to me much. But he's doing well. That's good. More than anything else, Jesse's voice really brightened up. And with just that, he didn't have anything in particular to worry about. Jesse asked him something that she was concerned of. But, that lotus girl. There were bad rumors in the internet. It's not true, right? By all means, it's not. People always tend to think that they were the victims. Tess Gilly, so. You can look at it as the same kind. Well, you should see people well. Also tell it to the people around you. Kaya, she's not that kind of person. That isn't so difficult. But it seems like you really take care of her. Jesse asked as if she was suspicious. Jo Min Jun replied with a voice he was sick of. Let's end this. I have to exercise. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Don't cut. I'm bored. I'm Bo. Even after Jesse's eager voice, he couldn't pull back his already extended finger. It was at that moment when the call ended and the screen was turning black. He heard a familiar voice. It seems like you were talking about me. Ah. What a surprise. Go making a sign. As he turned back to look at the owner of that voice, he saw Kaya pointing at her feet instead of replying. She was wearing high heels. Her feet moved. Clop clop. It was too clear of a sound to say it was silent. Jo Min Jun scratched his chin with an embarrassed face. Dot, I can't listen well when I'm on a call. I think that you are just deaf. So what? Wasn't that about me? If someone calls me they usually ask me about you. Aren't you like that? There's particularly no one that calls me. Excluding my sister and my mom. Kaya pouted and replied. He knew he was supposed to feel sad at those words, but when she said it with that face, he thought she looked cute. Jo Min Jun smirked. And your sister and mother don't talk about me. They do. They ask me why I keep a fool such as you next to me. Really? They really said that. And you also believe that. Kaya clicked her tongue and shook her head. Jo Min Jun frowned. When he played with his younger cousins, he tended to be the one that fell to these childish plays. He was like that when he was with Kaya. Although he didn't know if that was good or bad. I'm going to do some exercise. Leave. You are really going to exercise. You didn't until now. Why, because I teased you. Do I look like a kid to you? Who will exercise just because someone makes fun of me? There's nothing wrong with being a kid, and it hasn't been long since you stopped being a teen. How about you also stop acting like an adult? At that moment, he did get angry, but he didn't want to get swept up in her phase. 
For her, it hasn't been long since he stopped being a teen, but that wasn't the case. Because originally, he had lived until his thirties. It was an age where he shouldn't do childish things. It hasn't been long until I came back from the army. My body isn't that bad. Army. You were a soldier. Kaya opened her eyes roundly. She looked like she had never imagined it, because he had never told anyone that he had gone to the army. Joe Minjun slightly rolled his eyes. Yeah. And I also fired a gun and got training. There was no need to say that he was from the administrative part of the army. So Joe Minjun made up those last words. Kaya rolled her eyes with a confused face as if she had got a shock at the unexpected reality and then she asked in a careful voice. Then you did it. What? That. Key. No, if you shot a person. Even if she was trying not to show it, her big eyes were showing a light he had never seen before. And there was a lot of unnecessary hand gestures. Was it because of that? That even if he knew that it was childish, he wanted to tease her more. This man that was once thirty years old, replied with a really meaningful voice. Korea is a ceasefire country. Honestly speaking, she didn't know what he was talking about. Kaya was weak with words that were hitting around the bush. Was there no way that they wouldn't fire a gun because it was a ceasefire country, or precisely because it was such a country that there would be cases as that? Just listening to the weight of his voice, it seemed to be the latter case. Is it difficult for him to reply? It was understandable for her to think like that. She was embarrassed to show that she didn't comprehend. Kaya opened her eyes clearly and said. I don't think about that in a bad way even if it did happen. I understand. Thanks. Jo Minjun smirked. Just what in the world was she thinking about? He wondered if she was thinking of Korea as a dangerous environment such as the Middle East. He didn't know when he should clear the misunderstanding, and when he was going to be hit by annoyed punches. Let's worry about that later. First, let's do some exercise. However, Jo Minjun doing exercise that day didn't happen. Even before he grabbed a dumbbell, the staff approached and yelled. We are moving to the mission place. Everybody prepare and come to the garage. While they were moving in the bus, the main subject of the talk was obviously related to the mission. Sasha opened her mouth. It will be a restaurant, right? There are only such places to go when you go out. There's also hotels. But the certain thing is that we are going to a kitchen, with whatever shape it has. Will only one person get eliminated today too? I don't know. Thinking about the numbers, I think that it should, and there may even be some unexpected turns and two people gets eliminated. Just don't think about getting eliminated. That's more comfortable. Anderson said with a cynical voice. Listening to Sasha's sigh, Jo Minjun turned his sight to outside the window. How long has it been since he had gone out of Grand Chef's house? Recently, reporters gathered so much that they couldn't even get out. And as he could see the exterior like this, he felt that his stuffiness was getting relieved. Right behind his seat, Kaya glanced at his back. She wondered if she had touched some hurting memories related to the army with just his simple appearance of looking outside the window. How dangerous is it if it's in a ceasefire state? There was no way that she would have learned about that, or have some interest in it. Kaya poked Chloe's side that was seated next to her. Chloe turned to look at her with a confused face. Why? Shu, get closer. Kaya said with a really low voice. Is Korea, I mean South Korea, still a dangerous country? And do they also fire guns? I wonder. Not that I know. I even have some friends that traveled there. Well, I did see that people picked a fight with you through the news. But why? No, it's nothing. What is it? Making me curious. Are you really not going to tell me? If you are talking about Korea, is it not related to Minjun? S.H. I told you to be quiet. 
Kaya put on a fierce face and pressed Chloe's lips with her thumb. Chloe raised her eyebrows and looked at Kaya's face and finger alternating. Kaya lifted her finger and said. Act a little tactful, Chloe. So what should I be tactful about? You can't tell this to anyone. Kaya looked at those around her with vigilant eyes. Jo Minjun was still looking outside the window, and Anderson and Sasha were talking about the mission. Ivana was asleep. There was no one who would listen to their conversation. Kaya opened her mouth. Minjun said that he was a soldier. I think that you must serve military service in Korea, so it's obvious that he went to the army. What about it? So if you were a soldier you have gone to war and such. There were also some uncles that went to the army, but each of them had it hard because of the memories of the army. Minjun doesn't show it but. Isn't he suffering by himself? You know, there are those symptoms. P.T., this and that. Chloe looked at Kaya with a strange face. Just what was this little lady imagining? However Kaya was still putting a face that was entirely in her own world. Thinking about it, he will return to Korea again. I didn't think much about it before, but isn't this a dangerous thing? He would have to be helping in the humanitarian division. Should I tell Minjun to apply for it now? I think that you are having a big misunderstanding. Kaya. Korea is different to what you are imagining. It's a ceasefire country. He said that war can happen at any moment. That's right, she didn't know how to explain it. And in the first place, even she didn't know much about Korea. The problem was elsewhere. It was that if she left it like this misunderstanding on her own and worrying by herself, she became quite cute. However she wasn't confident on being able to handle Kaya's attitude after she got to know the truth and after she had feigned innocence. Kaya, actually, we have arrived. So they say. Let's talk about this another time. However, Chloe's determination got cut by the staff's yell. Well, now is not the only time. Chloe thought like that and turned her head. The thing she saw outside the window was a restaurant. A restaurant that was half on water, and the other half was on the shore. Because most of it was built with white trees, it had quite a romantic feeling in it. If anyone saw it they would have admired it, and Kaya wasn't an exception. She, who got off the bus, forgot even about Jo Min Jun having gone to the army and simply expressed words of admiration. However the voice that was heard after that, and the mic that appeared before her suddenly crumbled her admiration. It's Jessica Prada from Daily Street. We received an accusation that you bullied your schoolmate with malice, was that true? The weight of a restaurant, one, end translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa. Chapter 89. The weight of a restaurant, two, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 89. The weight of a restaurant, too, Kaya's face froze. Behind her shaking eyes, nobody could tell how she was feeling right now. The heart, beating faster than usual, and being chastened by rage or fear, nobody could know. It was difficult to breath. Her clenched fists trembled, and a rough breath got out from between her lips. Behind her front hair, Kaya's fierce eyes shone. Jessica naturally raised her camera to capture that expression. Martin quickly interfered and covered the lens. Jessica looked at Martin with a neutral face. Oh, it's been a while. Martin. Why are you here? No, I will change the question. How did you know and come here? EY, a reporter shouldn't reveal the source of the information. I wonder. Aside from that, I think that taking pictures without permission is also not the proper method. EY, why are you acting like this? Between us, a shiny smile appeared just like her blonde hair. If you were a man, you couldn't help but get moved by that smile, but Martin didn't. He knew a lot of people that were deceived by that smile. It was a fake smile anyways, just like her hair was dyed blonde. I don't think that acting like this between us is weird. Fall back for now. 
We didn't request for an interview, and aren't planning to receive one. Or should I just leave a complaint to Daly Street? Why are you acting that way? Don't make me scared. Do mouses in a warehouse escape because they get frightened a bit? They just have to get slightly full. After they get full they will consider that warehouse to be their house. They breed and carve a mouse hole. Do I have to give my warehouse to a mere mouse? Martin's eyes shone coldly. Jessica opened her eyes big and rolled them, and then shrugged her shoulders as if she could do nothing about it. I think that it will be hard to expect some benevolence from you. Fine, I will return for now. But remember, that the mouse is still hungry. Even if the owner of the house is scary, if it's scary, in the end it will bite down the wall and eat all of the grains. Then, the owner will plant some mouse traps. Martin replied with an annoyed voice. Jessica smiled brightly, didn't reply, and turned back. Her sight was directed at Kaya for a moment, but soon changed to Jo Minjun. Jo. I'm a fan. I'm cheering for you. Go all the way until you win. Go quickly. Don't you know that you are bothering with work? Ah, uh, I understand. I will go. I'm going. Ah, uh, and Miss Lotus, I'm sorry to have given you the mic from the start. Next time, I will ask with a calmer attitude. It was at that moment when Kaya was going to raise her middle finger instead of replying. Jo Minjun firmly grabbed her hands. Kaya looked at him with reddened eyes. There was no need for special words. Jo Minjun and Kaya. Both of them could guess with just the shake of the hand what the other was going to say. Let go. I calmed down. Kaya's voice was a lot calmer. Thinking about the wind that passed by just now, not getting dispersed would be stranger. Jo Minjun slowly let his hand go from her fist. She bit her lips and glared at Jessica's back as she goes further away. Chloe patted Kaya's shoulder. Don't mind her. It's not just a people or two that are like that. I don't. Even after talking like that, her eyes were really sharp. Kaya let out a sigh and just rubbed her hands. It seemed like when Jo Min Jun held her hand just before, the feeling still remained. A rough yet soft, strange hand. However, she didn't hate that moment. Why didn't I hate it? However she put it, he was still a man. Normally, even if he was trying to help, not feeling pleased was the normal thing. However, the moment Jo Min Jun grabbed her hands, that feeling was really profound. Was it because he felt like a real brother? Or? Kaya's sight was directed at Jo Min Jun. Many thoughts passed by about him, and in the end only one thought remained. Kaya looked at him with resolved eyes. Right. The important thing is if he returns or not, because it's a land that you don't know when war will happen, thinking about that situation, she felt the problem with Tess Gilly to be a minor thing. Jo Min Jun, who felt her gaze, turned his face and put on a strange face. What is it? What are those pitiful eyes? Don't interpret others' eyes like you wish. Go quickly. I can't go in because of you. And why are you this hurried? Jo Min Jun moved his feet to go inside the restaurant, on the lake. Inside the restaurant hall, the judges were seated at different tables. At each table, there were two chairs on the side opposite of the judges. Joseph, who was seated at the middle, raised his hand and said. Ah, you came. Take a seat since it's more comfortable. You have to go with the person you are the most comfortable with. Even at those words that were heard to be ill-tempered, Anderson didn't even hesitate for a moment and sat in front of Joseph. Jo Min Jun hesitated for a moment. First, he didn't want to seat in front of Emily. It wasn't that he disliked her but, it was burdensome. On the other side, he was more comfortable with Alan and Joseph and he could depend on them. In the end, the table Jo Min Jun chose was Alan's. Chloe, that saw that and wanted to follow his back, Kaya got one step before her. She sat next to Jo Min Jun and crossed her arms, and while Chloe was hesitating, 
Sasha sat next to Anderson. And of course, Chloe and Ivana went to Emily's table. Each judge opened their mouth. It was a voice that only those who were seated with them could hear. Do you know what restaurant is this? At Alan's question, Zhou Minjun and Kaya shook their heads. There was no way for Zhou Minjun to know of a restaurant in this faraway land, and Kaya couldn't possibly be interested about such a luxurious restaurant as this. Alan continued speaking with a calm voice. On the lake. Although it doesn't have a Michelin star, that's not because it's not delicious, but because evaluators don't come here. It has that good of a reputation. Check your surroundings. The inside of the restaurant had a clean and white feeling. Unlike the places that wanted to make an atmosphere and made the place dark, sunlight shone through the big windows and the lamps that were hanging on the ceiling shone so strongly their eyes hurt. The greatest spectacle was the scenery that could be seen beyond the lake. When you looked at the lake that was shining with a blue light, it made you feel calm just like you have come to travel. At that moment, many kinds of fishes or seafood were placed in front of them. They thought of it as normal, since the restaurant was on a lake. But the problem was the thing that was next to the dish. Recipe What Zhou Minjun saw with his eyes wasn't the window. A piece of paper that had the recipe written was placed next to it. As he slightly glanced at the other tables, the situation was similar. Only, that the contents of the dish was different. In front of Joseph was pasta or risotto, and in front of Emily was dishes that was clearly an appetizer at first glance. The moment he saw that, Zhou Minjun could vaguely guess the contents for this mission. Joseph raised his voice. The dishes in front of you is the content of this mission. You will have to cook the dishes that are placed in front of you as a chef from this restaurant for tonight. From right now. You have four hours. It also means that in that time, you have to memorize the recipe and master it. The team is just like the table. Yes. That's right. The evaluation method will be through the opinions of the customers. In case you get a complaint that the flavor isn't as usual, the person that made that dish will have to make up for the costs used. You can't even make one customer not satisfied, understood. Those were some burdensome words. While Zhou Minjun was deep in his thoughts, Sasha raised her hand. Joseph looked at her. Speak. Does the people that cook the dish get revealed? No. You don't have to worry about that. Even if we do say that the participants of Grand Chef will be the ones cooking, we are planning to make it secret as to who cooked what. At his words, Sasha let out a sigh of relief. Maybe, if the owner of that dish was revealed, you wouldn't know if it would turn out to be a popularity vote. If it became like that, the ones that had the advantage were Kaya and Zhou Minjun. For them, they could only worry about that. Zhou Minjun sliced the well-cooked salmon and put it in his mouth. He could slightly feel a fishy smell, but it seemed like it was done on purpose, rather than they couldn't catch it. And because it was roasted with butter, that fishy smell was felt more deliciously. It was the same for the codfish mousse. The characteristic smell of the codfish was felt densely, and because of the soft texture, the flavor was felt more clearly. But it was only that. Could it be that it was because it was still a growing restaurant? There were no dishes that were disgustingly delicious. That's the difficult part. It was easy to make a delicious dish. Even if you were an amateur, if you followed a recipe, you could make edible food. However, if you didn't live a life that was interested in cooking, you wouldn't be to cook food that would amaze others. Even if it was a restaurant that was expected to receive a Michelin star, it wasn't anything special. Actually, for the one stars, rather than being amazing it was only a fine restaurant. Now that I see, I heard that there was a fuss. Are you okay? In the middle of eating, Alan looked at Kaya and asked her. Kaya's mouth twitched and then she replied. I'm fine. Even so, you have indeed grown. If you were like before, you would still be angry. Am I a monster that only gets angry? Kaya replied with a voice as if it was a given and ate a sea mussel that was dipped in cream sauce. 
Alan forced a laugh. Did she already forget that she acted like a frightened chicken? He looked at Joe Minjun and opened his mouth. You really have a lot of hardships. At that moment when Joe Minjun laughed awkwardly, Kaya was thinking of another thing at the word hardship which Alan said. It was about Joe Minjun going to Korea. Thinking about the bullets and the bombs that exploded in Korea, she couldn't even properly feel the flavor of the food. In the end, Kaya took out her phone and checked the internet. The contents of the thing she searched was simple. Condition for refugees application. However, there were no applications for Korea. Alan looked at Kaya acting like that and frowned. Kaya. You aren't going to eat. Ah, wait a moment. I have something I have to urgently find out. At her blunt voice, he did get a bit angry for a moment, but honestly speaking it was difficult to expect some table manners from Kaya that shouldn't even have gone to a restaurant. On top of that, she said that it was urgent, so he was uncertain to tell her something. Q. What's the fastest way for a Korean to immigrate to the United States? She posted a question on a question site and turned the display of her phone off. For now, she wanted to at least think like this. To be a war, even if it was Kaya, who had lived a harsh life, the word war felt heavy and scary. I thought that Minjun had lived comfortably. Looking at the fact that he had even become a soldier, she thought that he may have lived a harsher life than she had thought. As she was feeling a sense of belonging to that truth, Jo Minjun turned to look at her as if it was strange. Why are you looking at me like that? I won't grumble from now on. No, why are you like this so suddenly? Did I do something wrong? Did someone tell you that you did? I just... Ah, uh, wait. A reply came. Kaya took out the shaking handphone from her pocket. She squinted her eyes and started to read at the comments. There were so many comments that it filled her glee. And just like everyone that didn't receive good education, she was weak with words. Job immigration. Family immigration. For the job immigration, it takes quite a few years and the conditions are also picky. It seems like the family immigration is done quite quickly. However, as far as she knew, Jo Minjun didn't have a family that had citizenship in the US. When she was about to let out a sigh of regret, the last part of the comment suddenly grabbed her attention. A. If you don't have a family, marrying someone with an American citizenship is the fastest way. But of course, it's only for when you have someone to marry. The weight of a restaurant, too, and translator. Subak proofreader. Saihikawa.